Uh, hello, everybody. It's us again. It's the Clockwork hello. Cantina. It's it's episode 15, and I'm your host, Josh902, and this is my co-host. And I'm DT3. Hello, yeah. everybody. How are we doing today? Hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Sorry we're a little late. Uh, we got distracted yeah. by reroll. I, uh, I, I was also messing I, with it. I, I, I'll take the blame on this one. I got distracted on reroll. I was, I was playing with it while I was waiting for you. <laughs> Cause yeah, Josh sent me. A, well, he sent it to me like a while ago, but I like only just got the chance to check it out. And before we started stream, I'm like, "Well, we have time before stream starts. Let me let me try to do this." And then next thing you know, we're like ten minutes past the start. I'm like, "Oh fuck!" Man. I'm like, "Yep, yep, yep." I actually, I actually figured. I said, I thought to myself, "I bet he's messing with reroll right now." But I don't blame I you. Am. I don't blame you yeah, at all because dude, like, that shit is cool, man. That uh, thing is really, really cool. Uh, so let's explain what reroll is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so reroll is an app uh, they just uh, that we kickstarted uh, that we that we backed that was a Kickstarter. I'm gonna link it in the chat. Uh, about a couple months ago, I don't remember exactly. It was like a couple months ago. Uh, and... yeah, I want to say it was several months ago. I forget how long ago exactly, it but two, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's I think been it was a while. like three months now, something like that. And I yeah. uh, I went ahead and backed it and got enough keys for all the uh, it's for it's for Dungeons and Dragons. It's an app where you can make <laughs> pixel art of your characters. It yeah. also has character sheets and everything on it. And uh, they just released the beta codes for people the last couple of days, and we finally got our codes today. And I sent them out to my players, and we've been playing with it. It's fun. It's awesome. It's great. I am a hundred percent feel like I am glad that I backed it. Uh, and because it's just so much fun to mess with already you know? it's, it's super cool like i've only just started messing with it but dude i'm like oh man man the possibilities yeah they have a it's, they it's, have, so, it's so cool they have apps on android they have an app on uh, the iphone store the i the the apple store i guess is what it's called i don't have i never had a never had an i yeah, i so. i i just uh i was messing with it on the website i wasn't yeah. i didn't even yeah use i did too but i have it on my phone right here it is there's Alex. yeah so I was messing with it, and I was I was like, Josh, how do you how do you save the image? Because I'm like I'm trying to save the damn thing. I'm like, I don't know how yeah. to do this. Yeah, because I one... made my character already. I just I just don't know how to save the image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like three little lines up in the corner, and you hit export. Yeah, uh, I I was trying to do that, but I don't I don't and, see that. And then it'll to, like... it'll send you an email. Uh... Yeah, I don't I don't I'll, I'll I'll have to talk to you about that after stream because I don't I don't. Oh, well, never mind. I see it. I see Found it. Now. it. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I a little it. tricky. It was a little tricky. I was like, "Where is this?" And I had to search around for it. And I yeah, I, 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 I couldn't find uh, it. Yeah, but I got it. But yeah, that's what we've been. That's what we've been messing with the past, I guess, thirty-ish minutes. We haven't had this yeah. very long. I was almost it's, like, it's, "Man, it's we gotta so go cool, do a cantina," man. but I want to keep playing with this right now. I know. Oh shit! I'm probably gonna mess around with it more after, dude. Yeah, oh, yeah. I definitely am. I still gotta do some stuff. Uh, yeah, you're gonna make uh, all the NPCs or what? <laughs> I, I've, I'm, I'm on the middle. I'm in the middle of making Ronin. I was making Ronin when I. Uh, Sweet. When I, uh, when you messaged me and was like, we should probably do this show that we have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey man, I was also <laughs> like fucking, you know, I was also uh, <laughs> like busy with that, like occupied and, and dis or distracted rather. No, yeah, I feel so you. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun to mess with. I, I'm definitely gonna mess with it more. And I'm glad that we'll have it, and we'll have it forever. So for all of hell our yeah, dude, games, for so. any games, that's that's like, that's super exciting, man. Yeah. That I can not only use it for 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 this game, but for like any other future games. So that's fucking cool, man. Absolutely, my camera is like dark. Let's see if I can adjust. Is it? Let's see if I can adjust this on the fly, people. If not, we'll just little, deal. A little quick adjustment here. Uh, Nope, that's not the right thing. Maybe we won't break everything. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, oh, by the way, guys, the the uh, podcast is on. Uh, is an MP3 now. So uh, if you if you're not able to follow through the whole show, uh, while you're watching, hopefully, catch the MP. Or uh, after, later on as a... Uh... Oh. There you go, I got my character. Yes. Got him, sweet. Alright. That's, that's a little much. Put our white balance up a little bit. And that looks better. I'm not as dark now. That looks better. 
Cool. Better-ish. I'll have to fine-tune it later. Good enough! Alright. Cool, cool, cool. So, other than uh, re-roll for, like, the past 30 minutes, what have you been up to this here week? Uh, this past week, uh, I've, uh, so last night I finished binging, uh, Disenchantment Part 2. Which is funny, because I actually watched a good chunk of it yesterday. I did not I finished it, and dude, I'm like, I want season three right now, man. Yeah, <laughs> really. I, 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 it, so. I, I think I enjoyed this, this season more than the first season. I don't know why, but I just, I don't know, I just said it, it like, flowed better for me. Like, I was just able to, like, binge it more. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, I, I really enjoyed it, so I'm like, I, I really want to, uh, watch the next I, I want to watch more, and it's like I can't because there's only ten episodes, and I saw them all already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw that. Um, I beat Shadow of Mordor and the DLC on stream. Oh damn! So that was cool. Uh, I played a bit of Red Dead Online again on stream yesterday, and that yes. was pretty fun again. Getting back into that. Um, and then I was speaking of our, uh, our main topic today, which is, we didn't even mention yet, but it's, it's going to be like war movies and stuff. Yeah. I, I didn't watch a war movie, but I was watching like a real life, like war, World War II documentary on Netflix called World War II in color. Yes. I've watched I have, it a like, few times. This old school, like World War II footage that they like, they like, uh, like re remastered in like color or whatever, since it was yes. black and white. So I've been watching that, and it's been yeah, that's been pretty interesting, man. Yeah, I've, been, so, I've, uh, I've watched that before. Um, my dad's yeah. a big war buff, so. So yeah, yeah I've, been, I've been watching that, uh, and that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, yeah. That's all I can really think of off the top of my head. Uh, but, this yeah. this week, I've just been doing D and D nonstop. So last Sunday we played D and D and we kind of came to the end of Arc One after Which a year. Cool, by after the way. a year and like a half, I would say by this point, like a year and a half of playing D and D, we finally reached the end of Arc One, which went out with a bang, no spoilers. And I and I've got to get prepped because I consider what's going to happen next, the kind of epilogue of Arc One, and then we're going to move into Arc Two. That makes sense. Um. And that'll be tomorrow, so make sure to come back tomorrow if you're interested in anything Dungeons & Dragons, because I've got shit planned. That's what, that's all I've done this week, other than I also played Borderlands 3 a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've, I've seen you've been playing a lot of Borderlands 3. Yeah, I've so been playing Borderlands. Them, right? Border, my life has been Borderlands and D&D, which, by the way, we're supposed to, we're supposed to, we're supposed to watch, rather, war movies. But I ran out well, of time and didn't have a chance to. Yeah, I, I, it's been, you know... It, it's fine. We're still going to talk about some of our favorite movies and stuff. Yeah, but, absolutely. But I've yeah, seen a yeah. bunch of them millions, millions of times. And definitely yeah, have yeah, some favorites. Yeah, same here. So it, it, it'll, it, it'll be fine. We'll be all so right. We're not worried about it, but we got news we'll be getting to soon. And there's... For sure. My chair is being weird. Um, and yeah, I'd like there was some breaking news I saw just like two hours ago. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Or some Red Dead stuff. But anyway... Yeah, that's oh, all I've been well up to. Oh, well, hail. All I've nice. been up to is, is, is D&D planning and uh, Borderlandsing, which I've been having a lot of fun in Borderlands. I've been playing Flack, which is like cool. the robot character that has like a, a hunter companion. It's a lot of fun. Gunplay, I think, is even better than Borderlands 2. Story's probably not as good as Borderlands 2. Some of the writing is a little short. Mm. Like a little not good, not great, but I still laugh and chuckle at times. And I don't think you can ever do out, outdo Handsome Jack as a villain. In any game. Right. Which I don't even know who the villain is in this next game. They are the Calypso twins, what they're called. Mm. And they are very much, like, influencers. Like, they're meant to be, like, YouTubers slash Twitch streamers. Which I think I heard somewhere that some YouTubers or something, like, voice the, some characters in the game or something. That might be them then, I guess, right? I have no idea. I have no clue. I heard that like some YouTubers or whatever, like you said, influencers voice characters in the game, so it might be them. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Um, what I do, what I do like about in this game, is that your character kind of talks a bit more. Uh, oh yeah. Than two, like they they comment on things that are happening and going on around them. So, and they talk to like story characters like Lilith and and like Tannis and those kinds of characters occasionally not like super deep rpg conversations but it's enough that i'm like uh-huh. hey i feel like it's an actual character instead of a silent mute this entire time kind of deal <laughs> yeah um so yeah cool. uh, 
It's had some performance issues, but I haven't had any issues with it personally myself. Cool. Happen so. I, I've heard some things which we'll I think we'll probably talk about here in a little bit. But yes, yes, yeah. yes. Well, let's go ahead and move into news now. All right. Uh, because that's I think that's what all I have. Is that all you have? Uh, for like what we've done in the past week. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I mean, within the past, like I said, the first thirty minutes or whatever, twenty minutes, however long. I was fucking with reroll, so that's like the latest thing I was messing with. Yeah, but... no, I've been playing with that too. <laughs> yeah, it's fun, man. It's really cool, dude. Like, I, I'm glad that you, you know, shout out to Josh for hooking us up with those keys, man. Yeah, and uh, everybody should go that check them a... out because you will eventually be able to buy the app and stuff. And that is really, really, it's really, really cool if you play D and D. Like, it's super, it's super fucking cool to mess around it's, with. It's pixel art. If you're a fan of pixel art, check it out. Uh, they're gonna be adding stuff to it, and they're gonna be fixing bugs and stuff, and it's in beta still. So. Go check them out and support them. But yeah, we're going to move on to gaming news now. So I'm sure you have a list, I hope. I have uh, some things, yeah. I have a few things as well, but I didn't write them down. I just have them in my noggin. We'll let you go first if you want. Cool. All right. So um, let's go ahead and uh, start off here. Uh, hold on. All right. So speaking of Borderlands 3, uh. <laughs> I'm looking at a Kotaku article here, which I'll post in the chat. But uh, <laughs> the developers for Borderlands 3 were fixing some bugs that erase people's save files. Oh, Lord. So unfortunately for the people whose files were deleted, it's too late for them. But uh, there's, been, there's been a lot of bugs with this game. This is one of the few that I've heard about. Uh, That's one of the worst ones. <laughs> yeah. I so, luckily haven't had that issue. Well, yeah, fortunately, right? Because getting your file deleted, that's got to suck, man. Yeah. Like, really, that, that has really got to be worst. So, yeah, they've they're just been fixing stuff like that. I know there's other stuff that they've uh, been, been working on trying to fix. Like, there was also another thing I heard about where, like, they re- there was a patch that removed screaming from a boss that screamed too much mm-hmm. from Borderlands 3. Uh, I think one of the biggest complaints they're having now is the character of Zane. When he li- gets lit on fire, he screams nonstop as well, and I don't think they fixed that yet. Mm. So they need to fix that. Gotcha. And the most of the negative things I've heard are just performance issues in general, which are like bad FPS drops. People that should be able to run the game pretty well aren't being able to run it that well. It, it needs some optimization, which will, which will be coming gotcha. in patches. So. And hopefully bug fixes. I'm surprised they missed some of these. That fucking uh, losing your save, that's the fucking worst. That's, I would, dude, I would like, I would be so pissed if that happened, dude. Because mm-hmm. it's depending on how much time you have into the game as well. Like, if it's early on, it's like, all right, whatever. But if you're like deep in, like, well, not deep into the game, but like if you've made like some significant like progress, you're like, Fuck this, dude. And it's not a short game by any means, at least not to me. I, I'm doing all the side quests I come across, which, by the way, there's a fuckload of side quests in this game. Um, and they're all really well written, too, and like have good good chunks of girthy gameplay to them. Nice. Uh, so that's a that's a positive that's a positive thing, but there's a lot of negative things as well. Mm. The game is definitely not short to me. To me, it doesn't seem short. Um, but yeah, it's just stuff like that. Like you know, they're, they're fixing bugs and stuff like that. Uh, I know they nerfed one of the farming yeah. spots. Like there was a there's a spot where it was really easy to farm up guns in the end game. Because Borderlands Two, ha- mm. uh, Borderlands Two, Borderlands Three has an end game. Borderlands Two has an end game, uh, which is you know farming up weapons. And they're eventually, I believe, going to add like raid bosses in here into the game. Oh yeah, they're going to make uh, like a MMO. Or what? Oh, I don't think they're gonna make it like an MMO, but they're definitely gonna have like probably raid like fucking, bosses uh, for up to four like fucking people. Fucking Destiny Two, like since they left Activision, they're like, oh, we're gonna turn into an MMO or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know exactly how it's all gonna work, but I think they did say they're gonna have like a raids, raids and stuff in there. So we'll see how that works out. Raid, raid bosses at the least. I don't know like full or anything. I don't know a lot of details on it. That's just all I've heard. Cool. What else cool, you cool, got? Cool, cool. Unless you have more uh, stuff. No, no, no. That's all. I was just all right. talking about that. Um, the next thing is, uh, if you ha- don't have enough launchers, Rockstar just launched its own. Mm. And uh, if you get it, I, I don't know for how long, but for, I believe, 
a, a short amount of time if you get it. You also get a free copy of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. San Andreas is good, man. Even though it's old, it's still fucking fun to play. Yeah, it's it's like I think after GTA Five, it's probably my favorite. I have Grand a Fire. I have a soft spot in my heart for. Uh, I like Vice City also. Vice City, yeah. Yeah, I like. I think those are my top three: is GTA Five, San Andreas, and Vice City. They're personally, all, they're all really good. Those, those are all fun, those three. fun, fun games. Big fans yeah. of all of those. But also, like in addition to this, not only is, oh, there's another launcher, or you know, yeah. you get G, you get San Andreas for free. I think, I, I think at this point, it's kind of a safe bet to say that if. Red Dead Redemption 2 ever comes to PC, it'll be exclusive to this launcher. Well, writing in on that, if I can jump in here. Sure. So, as of three hours ago, Red Dead Redemption 2 PC was denied the classification twice in Australia, which seems to indicate that it's definitely coming to PC probably next year. Mm. Probably well, next year, or at the very, the, the, very latest, the, 2021. This is why Rockstar's putting out their launcher like you want to play red dead 2 we're gonna have to use our launcher and 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 people seem to think uh that what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull like a gta 5 they're gonna wait for the next generation of consoles port it and then release the pc version after that so probably I which makes sense that gets everybody to like triple dip almost <laughs> yeah uh which hey yeah, I can see I, that. I'll, I'll buy it on pc i'd much rather have it on pc uh I don't. I, I would have to debate if I want to get it again, because I like. I feel like it would be like fun, like more fun to play it on PC. But I don't know, man. I already have the game. I don't know if I want to buy it again. Man. I would. I would double dip purely for the multiplayer and then the and the modding of role playing into it. RP if they let. Them yeah, play. we'll we'll see, man. We'll see we'll how see. it goes. It, it, we still got probably a ways to go before that even yeah. happens. But... but but like I said, I would imagine that if it's coming on PC, it's definitely going to be on this launcher. Also, I really hope they let you port. Um, like your your profile and stuff. Kind oh, of. dude. If, okay, look. Here's the thing. If they let you switch over, like if they let me transfer my character over from PS3, I would I would probably double dip. Mm-hmm. That because that's a huge thing. It's trying to start. It's trying to starting all over again from zero. It's kind of a little bit of a drag for me. Mm-hmm. But if they like let you like you know switch over your character or whatever, then I would be so down for that. I should do that. Yeah. But we'll that, see though. It'll be interesting. I was able to squeak in a little bit of my news on your news. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like if 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 you gotta if you you know if you have stuff like that, definitely feel free to jump uh, in, dude. Yeah. Cool. Let us know in the comments uh, below what you think about Red Dead coming. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Uh, speaking of launchers, uh, the Epic Game Store is giving away six, six Batman games right now. I already grabbed them. <laughs> They're giving away the Batman Arkham Collection, which includes uh, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and Arkham Knight. And then they're giving away the Lego Batman Trilogy, you know, one, two, and three, which this is a hell of a giveaway, dude. They're giving away six awesome Batman games, which, by the way, I think today is Batman Day, so shout out to Batman. Happy birthday, Batman. Not birthday, but Batman. Well, I mean, I guess happy birthday. I, I, is it his birthday? I don't know. I have no clue. <laughs> I, all I know is that it's Batman, Batman Day. I don't know Day. if like, this is like his. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it's uh, you know. I don't know either. Uh, anyway, but it is Batman Day, so go. Uh, yeah. Go grab your free Shout games on on. Uh, on the Epic I know, Game Store. Yeah. I know a lot of you don't like to use it, but grab your free shit. You might as well. Dude. Yeah, they have too. a, the free shit on here. Dude, I don't know how they give away so much free stuff, man. This this is also actually a good a good discussion point here. Like, how do they give away so much free stuff, dude? Fortnite money. And it's like and it's like good stuff too, man. Like how do they even like what? That Fortnite money, man. Dude. That's how they're getting all these yeah. exclusives and stuff too. They are making bank off Fortnite. Even though we hate it, they're making a fortune off of it. Which by the way, speaking of Batman and Fortnite, guess who's coming to Fortnite? Batman. <laughs> Batman is coming to Fortnite. See that segue? Uh-huh. Yeah. I didn't even see it coming. Big brain time. <laughs> yeah, though. But for real, he's he's coming to fucking Fortnite. Uh, it's gonna be like him and I think uh, Catwoman and the Joker, and they're coming with a bunch of like batarangs and you know the costumes and shit. So I don't know. I don't play Fortnite. I don't know. Anything I don't about either. That, but... My nephew doesn't even play anyway. it anymore, and he was pretty into it for a while. Before we leave the topic of uh, Epic Games, next week's Epic Games or free games are gonna be this game called Everything. 
and then Metro 2033 Redux. Which means grab your Metros, guys, because that game's worth playing. So yeah, I, I, sure. I already I already I bought it in the last sale, so I'm like so I don't really, you know I'll probably just grab it again just to have it on here, but you know. Uh on the subject uh, of launchers, I know I meant to jump in on the Rockstar thing, but we jumped in on Red Dead. No, yeah, go for it. Uh was that I can't wait for the, the GOG one. <clears throat> the GOG one, sorry, my voice cracked. The GOG Galaxy app. Uh-huh. Which which combines all the other apps into one mega app. <laughs> Oh yeah, I tried to uh, sign up for like, like t- to test it out yeah, or whatever. Yeah, a beta. Yeah, and I, 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 I don't know if I. I think yeah, they, I uh, they've already released like a version two. Uh, that mm. I saw on uh, Coke Carnage's stream the other day. It looks cool. It looks like it works great. So. Sweet. Well, I can't wait for that to come along. Come along. Come which, along. If, which, if you don't have anything for the moment, uh, that brings up. The Steam library update, which I haven't right. seen yet. I haven't seen it. Right, right, right. I, 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 I mentioned it last week during the podcast. Um, and since then, I've gotten the update, and that's that is how my Steam library looks right now. I have the new update. How do you like it? Better. I think it's pretty cool, man. I think it's cool. Um, I know that for some people, they they're like they they want to just get rid of the sidebar. And mm-hmm. just have like the you know the the, the other stuff, but I, I like it. I think it looks cool, man. Um, I like the thing that I started to do was like making custom artwork for the games, mm-hmm. and like I'm I'm using like custom artwork for like especially for the games that don't have like have it because some of them do and some of them don't. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like uh, that's kind of what I've been dabbling in and messing with is like making custom artwork for some of these games, and it's fun, you know. But I like how it looks, though. I think it's. An updated modern look, because I know people are complaining that Steam takes forever to update some things. They haven't they haven't done like a library update in a long time, I don't think. No. So yeah, that's you know, I think it looks good though. I dig it. Um at first I was like, Well shit, I'm gonna, it's gonna take me a little bit to get used to this, but I mean it's you know, it's not that big of a deal. Like I think I'm already getting used to it. It's it's it looks good. I like it. I think uh I think it's a a, a, a pretty solid update. Um it tells you like you know recent games and shit and like you know you can add games into categories i don't know if you could do that before but you can add to like favorite games or you can make like pretty much folders of games if okay. that makes sense. and then yeah like if you click on a game it'll have you it has like an activity page like on your library like this friend has this on their wish list or here are the achievements and here's community content that people have been doing or here's like activity that your friends have been messed like like for example, let me just click on a random game here. Uh, like there's like September eighteenth, this friend this friend of yours got two achievements. September seventeenth, your this friend played this game for the first time. You know things like that. Like it's it's you know like update stuff. I I, I think it's pretty neat. Like I, I I I like it. I think it's a good update. Um, but yeah, I th- I think you should be able to opt into it, Josh. You haven't already. I haven't. I I haven't messed with Steam because I've been playing just Border. Gotcha. <laughs> it's on Epic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on Epic Games. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I might. I'll opt into it and see how it looks. See how I like it. Mhm. All right. Uh, what else you got, my friend? Um. Oh, so remember how we always put stuff into into the universe, right? Mhm. We talked about wanting a Predator game. We talked about wanting a uh, alien game. We talked about wanting a Terminator game. Well, guess what? Terminator Resistance has an announcement trailer. Oh, Boom. I'm, I'm going to put it in the chat. This game looks cool. I want to play it. Uh, I love me some Terminator. And I cannot wait Thank for you. this. I, 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 I was like, dude, literally everything we talk about is getting made. Because you know how they're making that Predator game. And then, like, I think they're doing another Alien game, but yeah, I'm just like, this is this is incredible, dude. I actually haven't heard of this until just now, so this is a surprise to me. Yeah, it's it's super cool, dude. I mean, look at it. You get Alien or uh, Terminators and like the Resistance people or whatever, and it's. I would play this. The war against the machines. I would play this game. Do, 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 do. That's cool. 
Is Hell it? Yeah, dude. Is it? You're wondering like what what it's gonna be for? Yo, is it yeah. is it a multiplayer thing or is it like a single player thing? I'm not really sure actually. Like does one side play machines and one side play humans? Does it have a single player? It looks like it's got a single player. Yeah. Uh, you know. Because I think Hopefully. it'd be kind of kind of cool if it was kind of like a multiplayer thing too, where like you could one side plays machines, one side plays. Yeah, I would love if it was both single player and and. Yeah, ditto. I want both. I don't know. Fight for mankind, but it looks cool, man. I dig it. I, I'd, I'd play it. I, I want. I want a a, a a Terminator game. It look. Uh, I was gonna say. No. I was gonna say something dumb, but I was like, nah. <laughs> you ever be like, I'm gonna say something, and you're just like, nah, nah, nah. I'm not yeah, 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 yeah. I think everybody has those. November fifteenth. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's coming out soon, dude. Like really soon, and it's look, it's on Steam, Xbox, PS4. Like really soon, I was like, "What the how hell?" Come... They announced they just announced this thing, and it's coming out. Like, how come they didn't show that at E3? I don't know, man. It looks really fucking cool, though. I feel like that was something that should have been shown at E3. All you right, would think so. Well, interesting. Something to uh, keep an eye out, I guess. For yeah, I'm gonna be looking, keeping an eye out for that game. Looks sick, dude. All right. Absolutely. Um. Speaking of trailers, I know you like your XCOM. I do. Uh, and I know you haven't seen the show, but Narcos is coming out with an XCOM-style game. It's called Narcos Rise of the Cartels. Oh, my have lord. An awesome trailer right there. Because everybody wants to get on that XCOM stuff, right? That, that turn-based shooting shit. Yeah, man. man. Oh, this is only like a minute the show game, it looks like it shows some it, stuff. It does. It does a little bit. They start off with like a, you know... A little bit of this other stuff, but they they get into some a little bit of gameplay later on. Cool, I love yeah. um the XCOM style games. So yeah, yeah, I know. That's I was like, well, I'll put this on here because I know you like. I like just don't know about games. playing a drug cartel or. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't have to play a drug cartel. You can play the fucking the popo man. If <laughs> play you want. the popos. <laughs> you can take down the cartel or whatever. Yes, yeah. right. <laughs> that... I don't. This just seems kind of funny to me. Not that I hate it. It's just like, it's just there like it is. Narcos. See the gameplay. It looks yeah, good. It looks like good gameplay. Uh. Yeah, I, I I was a bit surprised too because I'm like, well, that's weird that they're making an XCOM Narcos. You know. The, the biggest thing about XCOM though that I don't know if other games can capture is just how they make you care about your soldiers. Like you wanna yeah. you wanna feel if you wanna feel sad if they die or pissed. Right, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And XCOM's really good at doing that, and I think that's something that other XCOM-type games don't really have too much. But mm. but it might be fun. I really enjoyed the uh, the Phantom Doctrine, which was like the spy one. The spy I've, one, yeah, yeah. I've been playing the Mafia one. There's another Mafia one that's coming. There's Phoenix Point. There's Empire that's of Sin, right? Yeah, that's Empire of Sin. Uh, Phoenix Point yeah. is coming at some point. It's There's like, so many of uh, these now, man. Where's the fucking popular. Star Wars XCOM, man? Come on, EA. What are you, you just, doing? You just mod. You mod XCOM too. <laughs> uh, pretty much, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But like, yeah, they need to make a proper like Star Wars XCOM dude. That'd be amazing. Could you imagine? I'd play the shit out of it. Hell yeah, I'd watch the shit out of it, dude. Because I love, I love watching that style of game being played. A lot of fun. Yeah. All right. What um... else? What else you got other than weird Narcos XCOM? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So there's. There's gonna be a, an upcoming uh, on Tuesday, actually. Yes. Tuesday, I think 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. There's gonna be a new PlayStation or Sony's new State of Play show. Yeah. And The Last of Us Two is gonna make a, a, a reemergence, so they're gonna show some Last of Us Two. Yep, they've definitely confirmed at... it's gonna be there. They've been posting on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, they posted yesterday, and they posted again today. Yeah. So they've been talking about that. Uh, it's gonna run for like 20 minutes. So it's not super those... long. No, those things are like generally really short, but they like that's how I found out about the Predator game last time as I was watching the state of play and they showed it. I was like, what the hell? But uh yeah, it'll be this Tuesday, September twenty fourth. Uh live, one PM Pacific, four PM Eastern. Uh so yeah, we'll be we'll be getting a chance to look at more Last of Us Two, so that'll be exciting. I wonder what else they'll show. I wonder. I'm sure they'll have like other stuff too that we don't know about. Hopefully, mm. right? 
Like I didn't know again, I didn't know about the Predator game last time and they showed that. And I was like, what? So we'll see. We'll see. Um, but also, uh, I also hope we get to see more of like Ghost of Tsushima because we haven't seen that in a long time, dude. Yeah. And I, and I really want that game. That game is like one of my most anticipated games. Whenever, and, but I don't even know when it's coming out. I don't either, and I'm super excited for it. Me too. I, I, I'm so ready to play that what game. They sh- what they showed at E3. Yeah, that uh, one year. I forget what. I, forget. I don't. I don't think it was last year. It, it wasn't. Was it, it wasn't. They didn't show up at all. It was like 2017. I don't even. I remember. forget when. It's been a while though. But that but game. Is, it, I really, really enjoyed cool. what they showed then, and I look forward to hopefully what'll be coming. Same here, man. Ooh, I cannot, not cannot wait. You think? Um, prediction. Last of Us Two this year or no? This year? Oh, I don't know, man. What if tomorrow is the release date and it's this year? You shoot yourself. <laughs> what if what tomorrow? What if what if tomorrow they announce the release date and it's this year? Oh, and it's this year. I mean, I don't like when would when would it come out? Like November? November. You get ready for the holidays. Yeah, like November, right? I would say like November fifteenth or the twenty second. What do you think? You think it is this year or not? What do you, what's your I, gut tell you? I don't know, man. I feel like I feel like they've been working on this game for a while, so they probably could be like, "All right, we're coming. It's coming out November at the end of the state of play thing." But also, I feel like there might be like coming early twenty twenty or something. It could be. I I think it's this year. I might be crazy I'm, for saying that, but I'm gonna go with uh, I think yeah, it's this year. I, I, I don't feel strongly one way or the other, so I can't really. I don't really want to take a guess. My gut, while. my gut says this year, probably November. I, I, like I said, honestly, I could see it happening either way. So yeah. I, that's why I don't feel strongly one way or the other. Mm-hmm. But either way, I'm sure people are people are gonna buy this game whenever it comes. Yep. Um. But yeah. That's uh, that's they'll, they'll be showing more of that game. So I know there's plenty of people excited for that. I'm really curious. I, I, I'm, I'm curious show. as well. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Like I'm always curious to see what they're gonna show at these state of play things. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, that's that's pretty much all I got on official gaming news. But there's a a couple other things that I have that are like mod slash user created content. Yeah, go, go for it. So somebody made a mod. For for the Resident Evil 2 remake, you know that guy that follows you around everywhere? Mr. X. Mr. X. They made, they turned that motherfucker into Pennywise the Clown I, from I, it. I saw it and had to stop that watching. It was shit super creepy. That looks terrifying, <laughs> looks dude. I'm like, so I'm, not even, I'm not even afraid of clowns or nothing, but fuck that Dude, mod. the way it just comes at you, it's fucking terrifying. Dude, I, I, put a, I put a link of a, in the video in the chat if anybody's, you know, I'm, really I'm not showing it on stream. I don't that thing is like fuck that dude i'm like this thing is hell no nah, dude i'm like hell no hell yeah. no hell no dog hell no again i'm not even afraid of clowns or nothing but dude i would fucking hell no dude fuck that <laughs> f that all right but yeah anyway i i just think it's cool how like creative people are with that stuff i, I, I think it, like much. i think it fits in really well man like with that mm-hmm. but uh but yeah, um, the other thing that I have is uh, somebody made like a Jurassic Park. Um, I saw this. Like, explore the park game thing here. I put all. I put the link also in chat. It's a very long video. Yeah, like you ride through the park and can look at it, but I don't think yeah. there's any dinosaurs. There's in no it. dinosaurs in it yet, unfortunately. I think he just they just did the 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 actual park. It looks really cool though. <laughs> it's like a 59 it's like an hour long video and it's really cool you get to explore the park and whatnot there are no dinosaurs in it but i mean it looks really dope like, it looks really really cool it's called the uh, jurassic dream explore the, the high, huge and highly detailed jurassic park recreation minus the dinosaurs That's cool. which uh i mean yeah It'd be cool if they had dinosaurs in it, but you know, I, I get that this. Somebody stuff is... went through a lot of trouble to recreate the park, and that's pretty dope. Yeah, man, that is pretty cool, and it looks great, man. But yeah, fuck that, <laughs> fuck that mod, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that that Pennywise mod is, is is a no, no for me, dog. 
that, that's gonna be a no. But yeah, the, this Jurassic Dream thing, it looks like they recreated like like rooms and like everything, man. It looks super highly detailed, dude. Like it looks really good. Like really, really good. Cool. Take Very the Jeep cool. and stuff and you know travel just travel travel the park, man. It's really cool. But anyway, that's all I got for gaming news pretty right. much. I got some things. I got some trailers. Right. I got some announcements too. Hey, all right, uh, man. Oh yeah. So the first thing we're going to start off with is we're going to hop back to Borderlands for a minute. Uh, because Go they had it. like a little roadmap thing, I think, yesterday? Yesterday, maybe? Or the day before? Yeah, it was yesterday. Which is in October, they're getting a, they're getting a, they're going to do an event called the Bloody Harvest. Uh, which, uh... Oh, yeah, I did hear about this. I'm going to read it to you. Yeah, yeah go for it. If that's all right, I'll read it yeah, on their I'll website. Everyone can take part in Bloody Harvest when it goes live in October as, in, as the first in many free updates and events that you can expect from Borderlands 3. For the duration of the event, any Vault Hunters who have departed Pandora for the first time and started exploring the far reaches of space will start to encounter haunted enemies around the galaxy. These haunted enemies are your key to accessing a new event-specific map, but watch out. The ghosts that rise from the bodies of slain haunted enemies will do their best to scare you to death. Coming into contact with one of these aggressive apparitions will induce the new terror debuff, which partially shrouds your vision in the mysterious mist and weakens your gun handling, accuracy, and spread. As you explore the ghost-infested galaxy, you'll earn Ectoplasm. That can be turned into Maurice, your scaly new power who takes residence aboard Sanctuary. Once you've earned entry into the Blood Harvest map, Bloody Harvest map, beware of dreadful dangers lurk. Abound at every turn. Look at the shadowy sky and you'll see a winged racco lantern soaring through the air. You're going to swoop down and breathe fire in your face. Tread lightly through a ghastly graveyard crawling up Malawan goons who've reserved a burial plot just for you. Resist the urge to retch as you fight through ratch infested pits with rivers of blood running through. And they got some screenshots here. Hey. Uh, and it looks pretty cool. And there's some bosses and there's some new skins, some new guns. Looks cool and it's 100% free. So that'll be cool. Oh, dope. Oh yeah, man. Oh, and and when, while I was reading that, I had a had a thought of some things I've been uh -huh. seeing on Red Dead, which is that people are apparently finding zombies. They are. Um, I, I was seeing this on Reddit. I was like, wow. Yeah. So on Reddit, there's some screenshots where uh, so people are yeah. thinking that where they just I guess they come across dead bodies or they shoot people and they turn into this or they can just find living people that look there like was, this, where they look like zombies. There was, yeah, there was one that I saw that somebody was like in a like in a cave or something like in a mine I think and they found like a dead person on the floor that looked like a zombie and their eyes were glowing green I was like wow so people are thinking undead nightmare DLC probably multiplayer stuff uh, coming I'm 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 down for that dude especially for like uh, now we're, we're coming up on October and, and spooky stuff I'm I'm ready dude I mm -hmm. I, I want to play it I think it'll be cool but I did want to mention that because we were. Uh, that was very yeah. Halloween related for Borderlands, and then when I was reading it, I was like, we didn't talk about the Red Dead zombie thing. We should mention that because that's pretty. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew about it too. We probably should talk about it, but yeah, I just I was just like, oh, well, is Red Dead coming to PC? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. We got like. Um, yeah, yeah no, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the next thing I have is a new Total War game got announced. Uh, Total War Saga Troy, which got a trailer. Oh yeah, and yeah, I'm gonna I play it right I, I, now. All I knew is that this was announced. I didn't know I had a trailer. So it has this, like two so trailers. This would be interesting. They show the campaign cool. map for it too in a different trailer than this. Uh, and I haven't watched this yet. Uh, but Achilles. Achilles. Yeah, it's gonna have like Achilles and uh, and like the gods are gonna be in it apparently. I'm gonna read the FAQ about it after. Uh, Dang. All right. After this uh, video gets done. Um. Cool. 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 Which I love Three Kingdoms. I think it's great, and I want to play it, so I need to play it again. Sega, Total War. Uh, but yeah. It's going to be dope. Look at this. I'm fucking walking through Battlefield. Hell yeah, dude. This is one of my favorite um, periods of history. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Got Achilles, and he's going to fight Hector, I guess. He's, he's going to fuck everybody up. Yeah, He's going to kill him like in the movie or whatever. Achilles. Achilles, fucking. Where, where's where's our boy Brad Pitt at? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good movie. I enjoy that movie. It is, dude. I, I, I enjoy it. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I, that movie's fun, man. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is. Oh, that means they'll actually they'll be dueling like Three Kingdoms, huh? 
Yeah. Oh, that'll be dope. What if Hector wins? Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> I mean, you could, right? It's a game. <laughs> what if he's the new Lou Boo? <laughs> <laughs> I saw... taking I, out Achilles, man. I saw, <laughs> Your boy Lou Boo. I saw a mod for Three Kingdoms that lets you start as Lou Boo. <laughs> no, damn. Troy, a Total War Saga. Yeah, and then they have the campaign map reveal right there. Uh, which is another like two minute video. That we're not Dang. gonna we're not gonna watch that. If you wanna watch it, go check it out. I'll drop this in the chat because I did I forget to. Uh, there it be. But we're gonna look at the FAQ for this now. Some frequently asked questions because I'm curious to some things how it works. I actually didn't cool, know cool. they posted this. Yeah, so go for it. Uh, it has a, a release date to, on Steam for 2020. Um. So total, it's a saga title, which is different than regular Total Wars. Total War saga title takes the grand strategy and real-time battles of a core Total War game and channels them into an intense flashpoint of history. It's not like a full game kind of deal. It's not like it's not exactly like Three Kingdoms. Three Kingdoms is bigger than this. Uh, but what it is is like a Total War game and channels them into an intense flashpoint of history, letting you experience and ultimately determine the outcome of pivotal moments in history when the future of entire nations hung in the balance. Having all the depth features and mechanics of a major era Total War game, Total War Saga titles offer a comparable number of faction heroes and settlements to their core counterparts as well. That's hundreds of hours of gameplay potential. Uh, Total War Saga titles are our chance to think differently in our designs, often leading to new ideas, mechanics, and perspectives to go on to influence future era titles. Why did you choose Troy? Troy is a totally new period for Total War and is the furthest back we've ever gone in history. Mm. Like our major era Total War game, our Total War Saga titles tend to focus on key flashpoints in history, which we just read that. Uh, period is also one of the most distinguished and mysterious within human history due to its being rich in myth and legends of heroes and monsters, allowing us to explore a plethora of new ideas for our fans to experience. Achilles! What role do the gods play? Uh, gods in Favor is a new gameplay system for a Total War Saga Troy. Similar to our truth behind the myth approach to our mythical creatures, the Greek gods within Troy are purely spiritual representations. But they influence the game in similar ways to their Homeric, Homeric counterparts. Rather than the gods directly intervening with the conflict itself, it is the faction's belief that the gods are intervening on their behalf, which determines the bonuses they receive. After all, the more fervently a leader devotes themselves to a deity, the more likely they are for people to espouse and live those beliefs. These bonuses are specific to each god and provide a range of benefits from strategic warfare buffs to growth and resources increase. Uh, they also say it looks like there's going to be mythical creatures and such. If you want to see the whole FAQ, I will link... Well, I can't. This is a long-ass link, actually. <laughs> uh, just, just look it up. Just, just, just go Google Total War Saga Troy FAQ, and it'll pop right up. There you go. Uh, I can't read that entire thing. They posted a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and the last thing I have is the Surge 2 has a trailer, a launch trailer. I don't know if you played the first Surge. I didn't, but the Surge 2 looks like it's pretty cool. I did not. Uh, uh, it's kind of like a sci-fi, Dark Souls-y, um, I don't no. know, like sci-fi game where you, Dang, decapitation. you get like, um, yeah, you get like this exosuit deal and like go around and fight shit, cut it up. It looks cool. I watched Co play the first one. I'm bad. It looks dope. It's, it looks pretty crazy, yeah. One's pretty. At least it looks like it does. <laughs> choppy, choppy. There is a lot of slicing and dicing in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to make so sure far, there's a lot of blood. The they yeah. want somebody's that's, head. I, that's gone. It's cool, man. Yeah. And that's how that's how those kind of weapons should work, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> did he kick his head off? I think he did. Dude. That's that's wild. Courage 2, September 24th. So that comes out in a couple of days. Check that out. Uh, is wild. If you're interested in it. Uh, I know the first one had a few issues, but it seemed to be pretty well liked, and it's going to have a sequel now. So. Cool. All right, that's all I got for my gaming news. Moving on to, uh, what is it, movie news we do next or television news? I can't even remember. Movie, my... uh, it's 
we do movie or we television. Do, sorry, we do TV news next. Television news. TV Yeehaw. news. Get ready, my friends. We're going to talk about all the TV right now. All right, what you got? What you got? What you got? All right. So the first thing I have is uh, Netflix has qu- uh, secured the rights to uh, or the streaming rights to uh, Seinfeld. Uh, yes, I saw this was like a big thing. Uh, yeah, it is. I don't know if you're a Seinfeld guy or not, but I am not really. They they've secured the rights to this. Uh, it is a five year deal, which is set to begin in 2021. That's a long so time, man. It is, yeah. So it's 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 pretty pretty nuts, man. I, th- this was like everywhere. Uh, everybody was talking about this. This is a big win for him, man, because Seinfeld is a is a fucking whether you like it or not, it's a huge fucking like, one of these like comedy shows. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know what it is. I've, I've watched the episodes here, and there. Yeah, 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 yeah. It came no, on I in a time. It. it came on in a time where I didn't really care um, for that stuff. I didn't watch a lot of that. I don't know okay. say so. Gotcha. Of that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. No, I guess you. But I know, I know it makes like. T- I think it made tons of money just on reruns alone. Yeah, 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 for sure. So yeah, this oh. is huge for them. But yeah, that's that's a huge win for them. A fucking five year deal for all 180 episodes, man. That is that's nuts. So starting in 2021, uh, yeah. I mean, I think Hulu currently has them, which Hulu has them until 2021, and then Netflix will take over after that. But yeah, it's it's pretty uh pretty nuts. So it's it's crazy. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if what money was paid, say. I know, right? Uh, let's see, what does it say? It's, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, oh, wait, no, this is, this is the, this is the Hulu deal. Okay, so it doesn't, I don't think it says, I'm looking here at, at a variety, at, this is, a, I'm looking at the variety article. Okay. And it, I don't think it says how much Netflix paid over, but they have the Hulu deal. In 2015, uh, Hulu paid 130 million, Jesus. or 20, or 22 million annually. So just imagine how much Netflix had to pay if that's how much Netflix or uh, Hulu did. Jesus. So this, yeah, this show makes the money. So uh, here comes yeah. the money. You can, only, you can only imagine. But anyway, somebody, that's... somebody's walking around with just a wheelbarrow. Full of hundred dollar bills. <laughs> so, so, no, somebody's just swimming in gold like fucking uh, Scrooge, Scrooge McDuck. McDuck jumping into yeah. his vault. Yeah, fuck it. That's probably Seinfeld just swimming in the fucking Scrooge yeah, McDuck. Jesus. Gold. Yeah. Right. Anyway, uh, there is a Battlestar Galactica reboot in the works at uh, NBC's uh, streaming service. Makes sense. Yeah, because all these streaming services are trying to like get their thing to attract people to to their thing, right? To their to their streaming service, mm. so there there's going to be another reboot of Battlestar Galactica because the one from the 2000s 2004 I think was that show, that was also a reboot. I have only seen the original from the 70s I think. I've never seen like any of it. I've only seen the original one, which is the one that I like. I know it's kind of corny and cheesy nowadays, but I I think it's pretty cool. Um, so they're yeah they're planning on making another reboot. We'll see how this is, we'll see how this goes. I never saw the 2004 one, and now I'm like I don't even know if I want to if they're making another another reboot. I don't even so, know if it was that good to be honest. I don't know. I mean, I, I know a lot of people liked it or liked it, enjoyed it, and they think it's like good, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I just nothing has ever really like it has it's it hasn't been one of those shows that's called to me. Oh, I should, I should watch this. Called to me, okay. especially since I like enjoy the 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 original. Um, but yeah. So that they're working on that. I, I mean, I'll, I'll check out the reboot. You know, like that. Whenever they, whenever that comes out, I'll, I'll, I'll check that out for sure. Um, I'll be intrigued by it. I'll be, I'll get more. I'll get. I think I'll get more excited for it once I see like actual like images and tra- trailers and stuff. But yeah, I don't know when this plans on coming out or anything. But uh, they're just it's in the works for NBC streaming service. So. All right. And and I think the showrunner or the main guy is a dude who was uh, Mr. Robot creator. Oh, okay. 
So I heard that show's also good. I haven't seen it either. I liked season but, one. I haven't seen the other but, season. But I'll, I, yeah, I have to check it out. I haven't seen. It. I hear it's good stuff. Yeah. I hear Rami Malek is good for good in that as well. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be you know intrigued by it. So he, he might be the reason that show's so good. To be honest, now that I'm sitting and think about it, it's Rami Malek. I mean, yeah. He's great. Uh, speaking of things coming back to streaming services, uh, the Boondocks. If you guys, if anyone, if you guys have heard of this show, is coming back for two more seasons. Uh, I think I think it's a total of twenty four episodes, so twelve episode seasons, two more. Uh, for HBO's HBO Max, which is their streaming service. So yeah, this is uh this is exciting because I really enjoy the Boondocks. It was one of those shows that I used to watch like a lot, like. You know, on Cartoon Network or Adult Swim or whatever the fuck it is. I, I want to say uh, it, was, it was Adult Swim. Yeah, I, I think it was Adult Swim. Yeah, it was Adult Swim. Yeah. I've seen some episodes of it here and there. Yeah, so I'm I'm uh I'm excited for this. This is one of this. Is, it's a really it's a funny ass show. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Like, <laughs> it's you know it, it it'll be. I, I'm I'm looking forward to the next two seasons, so I'll definitely be checking that out. I'm excited for that. Um, and yeah, I'm just I'm, it's 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 cool, man. It's cool that that they're still gonna be able to make a show a show like this <laughs> still nowadays. Because like when they first made this show, it was a different time, man. This this show it premiered in like 2005, mm-hmm. and like now and and nowadays the society that we live in, there's a lot of things that you know, are not acceptable anymore. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like as like they used to be back in the day. So it's always interesting to me when they like. Do like people do stuff or bring stuff back from back then when it's like they could do that and now you can't, you know? So we'll see. We'll see how they do it. I hope they keep it the, the way it used to be the show. Um, but yeah, we'll see, man. I, I'm, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited for that. All right, cool, 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 cool. Uh, in other news, in 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 common sense news, uh, the Lord of the Rings TV series is gonna film in New Zealand. Uh, as if anybody was questioning this they tweet the the twitter official twitter account for the lord of the rings tv show tweeted out a flag of uh, new zealand and which pretty much confirms that they're filming in new zealand again which makes sense they filmed all the movies over there and everything so again this is like common news or common sense news but you know it's 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 cool yeah consistency Um, yo yes uh here's something that i know you'll I don't know if you'll be happy with this or you'll be I, like, no, I know what I, I know what this is. Uh sure. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Uh Glow yep. was renewed for its fourth and final season. I, I, I always suspected that it it ended up four or five seasons and they're gonna, I I, re- they, I enjoyed the shit out of season I, three. I love Glow and I'm glad they get to go out um the way they, they want, want to. to. Right? Yeah, I'm always happy about that as well. So but I'm like, this is a good show, man. Like four seasons now, but you yeah, know, it, it's... don't drag it out if you don't have the material. I, love I agree, the though. I agree with that. And yeah. uh, they get to wrap up the storylines how they want to. And if you haven't watched Glow, you're doing yourself a disservice because that show is really good. You should go watch it. Is it. Really, really good. Allison Brie and uh, Betty Gilpin are are fucking awesome. And, and so is Mark Maron and everybody. So everybody's good. The, everybody's a good lot of them show. are. Yeah, it's very much. All the drama. actors and actresses are fucking. They kick ass in the show. Yeah, go watch it, man. Like if you haven't watched it, like it's, it's yeah, so you know good. how I was on Daniel for so long to watch Karate Kid. Well, which, now I I'm find, on... which I did see, and then I. I love that show. Uh, and now I'm like, the the way I'm going to do him is the way I'm going to do you, the audience that's listening now. Go watch Glow. If you have not given it a chance, give it a chance. Because it's really good. It's it's really, really good. All the actors and actresses are incredible in this. It is, it's only three seasons right now. And, uh, and then apparently it's only going to be four total. So, I mean, it's so good. You don't even have to be a wrestling fan to watch it. It's so good. Like, it's such a good show. Like, mm-hmm. just give it a shot. Check it out. There's wrestling in it, but it's not all of it. It's not the entire show, so if if you're worried about that, just give it a shot. It's, it's really, really, really good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now here's something that's to me personally mind-boggling. Moving on, another news. Okay. AMC Network CEO says the Walking Dead franchise has decades of life left. Decades. Yes, decades of life left, and I'm over here like. Really? 
Because this show fucking died to me like years ago. <laughs> I have not been. I I stopped watching the show. I I this is coming from somebody who used to love this show. Like I really really enjoyed the show in its early seasons. And then like after a while, this shit just got boring as fuck, dude. Like this show is. It became so trash to me. Like I just I I do not. I stopped caring about it, man. I don't watch it anymore. Mm-hmm. And they're doing like spin-off shows, man. There's they have another they've there's another one called Fear the Walking Dead that they've been doing since like I think 2015 or something. And then they're working on like uh, they're working on more spin-off shows. I'm like, how? What? They're gonna milk that teat till there's nothing left. <laughs> they they really are, man. They really, really are. And everything I feel everything should have an ending. As like I, I, I agree. And they've drug it out so long now that they probably won't even get a decent ending out of this show ever. I just, I don't know, man. I just, I really don't. It's it's, it's just mind-boggling to me, these comments, dude. Like, you have decades left of life. The comics just, just ended, like, not too long ago, didn't it? Yeah, the comics. They had, like, a, they, they had like a surprise ending that, you know, they're like, fuck it, let's just end it. They acted like it was going to keep going, and then, and then they pulled it. They pulled a double turn and was like, nah, it's over, man. It's the last issue. Yeah. They're like, nah, fuck this. We out. But, so I'm just like, AMC, why? De- decades of life. That is just mind mind boggling to me. Somebody at AMC is delusional, I believe. Uh, that would be Mr. Josh Sapin. Sir, you or are Sapan, delusional. Sapan, you're, I don't know, man. Anyway, that's bonkers, dude. Bonkers. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's I, I I get that a lot of people watch this show still and they love it and whatnot. But I'm just like I I don't understand. I feel like a Whatever. lot of people still watch it just out of habit. You know, I used to be like that. I'm like, well, I've already sucked along enough with the show, so I might as well keep watching it. But at a certain point, I was like, fuck this, dude. <laughs> there's so many. There's so much. So many other things to do and 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 use. I have to use my time wisely, man. I don't have time watching bullshit that I don't care about. And it happens more the older you get. Yeah, man, it's like fuck that, dude. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll move on. Uh, we're gonna go into some casting news here. Uh, this is from a show that I have not seen, but I really want to check out. It's it's called Fargo. Uh, season season four, they cast Timothy Oliphant. He's gonna be in a recurring guest role. For I Fargo. love I love Timothy Oliphant, man. Yeah, like I bring this up because he's a he's a heck of an actor and. Uh, He's going to be in, in the show, which I want to check out, but I haven't seen yet. I really want to check out Fargo. I know that Fargo is one of those shows where they, they like switch up the cast every season. So like each season has its own like cast of people in it. Um, but I hear that Ewan McGregor is really good in the show. Fucking Kirsten Dunst. Is that like a, they have, there's so many people in the show, man. I don't know I, shit I, about that show. I really want to check it out. I really want to check it out. I need, I, need, I need to watch it. I just haven't yet because there's so many other things to watch, but I really want to watch it. Um. Uh, but yeah, he's been cast in season four as a recurring guest role. So hell yeah, man! I, I'm all I'm all for adding talent to uh, things. So yep, and Timothy Oliphant is a hell of a talent. Yeah. What else you got? Anything else? Oh, here's 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 one. Here's a bizarre one. Okay. Uh, Marilyn Manson has been cast in American Gods season three. That's not as weird as you think. Uh, he was in Sons of Anarchy and was great. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Huh. He had a, I didn't know that. He was in a. He played a, a white supremacist oh, that, in jail. That's that's what it says here. He's like no stranger to the small screen. The Sons of Anarchy album will play. Uh, he's gonna be playing on this show a bloodthirsty, uh, lead singer of a Viking death metal. He was, he's, he's great in Sons. I loved him in Sons. So yeah, he's gonna be in season three. I don't I don't think you've seen the show at all, right, Mary? I've seen the first few episodes. Okay, well the first season is better than the second season. Uh, the second season to me dropped in quality, so hopefully season three picks it up. Cause yeah, we'll see. But yeah, that's that's some casting news on that. Uh. What else we do? Uh, oh, here we go. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, it's the final season of Arrow. 
and uh, Willa Holland is, as as you would expect, is is coming back. Which, if you don't know who she is, she's Thea on the show. Girl, she's coming back for the final season. Uh, I'm I'm excited for the CW verse stuff. Uh, hopefully, it'll be good. I'll probably watch the big crossover that they're gonna do, and that'll probably be how I end everything. Which, by the way, speaking of the crossover, there is some cast crossover casting news, which I don't know if I want to say because I don't know if you I, want to get I know, I know, I know what it is. I've seen a lot of it. So. There's, there's the the huge casting news. Which, so we spoiler got spoilers alert, we're, incoming, guys. We're, we're, we're gonna talk about it. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Come back for the later. CW verse Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, news. We're gonna talk about some casting news that happened here. Uh, spoilers. Ready? One, two. You've been warned. Three. All right. Uh, from Smallville, both Erica Durance and Tom Welling are reprising their roles as Lois Lane and Super fucking Clark Kent Superman yeah. in the crossover. So that is gonna be fucking cool, man. That is gonna be really, really cool. Uh. This crossover is gonna be hype as shit, dude. Yeah. Like really, really hype, dude. Like I can't wait to watch it. Yep, it's gonna be cool, man. Like even though I don't, I, I don't watch the CW shows anymore. I, yeah. I am gonna watch the crossover. I'm not gonna get caught up. I'm just gonna watch the crossover and let it end there, because that's how I want to do it. That's yeah, like like I still watch them, but I'm 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 excited for this, man. I wish that just every show was ten episodes, like Arrow this season. Because twenty plus is like too many. Quality over quantity, people. But you know, um, I don't know. The CW likes having like a million episodes per season. And the, the I I know I've mentioned this before, but the worst part about that is the breaks that they have, man. Yeah. The breaks always fuck everything up for me. I hate it so much. It's really, really like it. it just it a part. I I think I've mentioned this before, but part of the reason why I stopped watching for a little while was because the breaks just messed me up, and it took me a while to catch up all over again from the beginning. But uh, yeah, I just the breaks suck. So I wish I wish CW would lower the ep- the amount of episodes per season for all the shows. I think like I think for me personally, the perfect mark is eight episodes to thirteen episodes. Yeah. So like you can either do eight episodes a season, ten episodes a season, or like thirteen or something. Something around that range is perfect. Because anything more than that, I feel like, is just too much. Personally, yeah, um, but yeah, yeah. So that's your CW verse, uh, you know, cast and news there. Uh, I only have one other thing for TV, I think. I got like two which things. is uh, all right. Well, I'll go ahead and do mine, and then you can do yours. Uh. So the other thing that I have is uh, Peaky Blinders Season 5 has a trailer, which I don't know if you've seen Peaky Blinders, but if you have I've seen the uh, first two seasons. I stopped watching at Season 3. It's it's a hell of a show. It's really, really good. Uh, yep, I should go back to it. Yeah, definitely, man. It's it's, it's great. And, and yeah, there's a trailer for Season 5. I, Is it I, spoilery I, at all, or can I show it? Or... Uh, I've seen it. But I don't. It, it's it's a really short trailer. They they have. All right, I'm gonna flip over. You can like you know play it and and you know, there, there there's some stuff in there, but. I don't have any sound going, but got some cool images here. That's fine. Yeah, it's just it's just it's just, it's just cool imagery. You everybody, just skim through it. Everybody rocking yeah. their suits. I'm so I still have that Superman thing in my head. Yeah, I, I like the moment I hummed it, I was like, "Fuck." Um, um. There's your Peaky Blinders, though. There's your Peaky Blinders trailer. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. It's uh, the the season. Uh, I think on in the UK, it's already like been been airing. I think I think on tomorrow on Sunday is like the finale. But for us over here, it's coming to Netflix on October fourth. So we can watch the entire new season on uh, October fourth. So I'm excited. definitely a show that I am looking forward to checking out. Yeah. And that is all I have for TV news, my friend. I yeah. got some news. 
And one of them is a Pokemon news, and it's a spoiler. Oh. But after 22 years, our boy Ash Ketchum has finally <laughs> won the Pokemon League. After yes. 22 yes. fucking years. I think as a child, that him losing every fucking league is what killed the show for me. It's good to see after 22 years, your boy, he's a champ. He's a champ. I saw a headline somewhere. For the first time in his 20-year career, 10-year-old <laughs> Ash Ketchum finally <laughs> went to the championship. <laughs> oh, it's God. It's a ridiculous line to, uh, like, like headline to read. For the uh, first time in his 20-year career, 10-year-old Ash Ketchum finally wins the cha- Poke Championship. Like That's just so ridiculous. Uh, dude. But congrats <laughs> to him on finally fucking winning. Congrats to you, boy, Ash Ketchum. We grew up with you, and your determination and willingness to never give up <laughs> has paid off. After there you 22 go. Years, you're the champ, baby. Well, That's how you know. Never give up. Even if it takes <laughs> you 20 years to do something, never give up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, also, also animation for Pokemon looks weird nowadays. <laughs> it looks so weird. Uh, and the last thing I have is a trailer for Blade of the Blade of the Immortal. So let's cool. watch this shit. Which is a this is a Amazon show. It's gonna be a anime. Uh, it is a complete adaptation of the 30 volumes of the manga, and both episodes 1 and 2 will premiere October 10th. Let's watch this here trailer. Let's do it. Which, uh, I'm going to put on a little This is going to be gory as fuck, by the way. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so there's your warning. They speak in Japanese. The Japanese subtitles. Ooh, that's a hand on a sword right there. That sure is, my friend. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, but I'm in. Sweet. It looks fucking wild as hell, man. Oh my god. <laughs> that guy got oh shit. Seconds. He slices and dices his ass up. Jesus. This, yeah, this is a bl- bloody gory ass right, show. We're gonna, we gonna watch this. <laughs> He's like, I'm sold. Sold. Give you that ultra violence. Which, which, by the way, I think they made a live-action movie of this. They... Yeah, it's like a dude that's got, like, these worms in his body, and he can't die. Like, the story. Interesting. Like, he's, like, immortal. Like, even if he gets, like, chopped up, like, the worms put him back Amazon or original? Yeah, go check it out, man. October 10th, so it's not that, not that far away. No, not too far away. Less than a month. Oh, they did make a movie out of this. The movie was badass. Wonder if this will... manga's even better. Sweet man. Sweet, sweet. That's all I got for uh, that was television. Movie news now. Heck yeah, movie news. So we are gonna hop right into that, friends. Uh, first up for movie news. I don't have too much on this, to be honest, on movie news. There's not a whole lot that I have, but we'll start off with something pretty neat, I think. Okay. Uh, there was recently, it was recently revealed that there was an alternate, newly released, never before seen deleted scene from 2008, the first Iron Man movie. I watched this. Where Nick Fury mentioned radioactive bug bites and mutants. Mm-hmm. So this goes to show you that even back then, in the very first movie in the MCU, they were planning on talking about other things. Post post the thing in the chat. Uh, this was re- revealed from at the Saturn Awards. I, I, they had this uh, like deleted post credit scene from from the from the original Iron Man. Where, yeah, Nick Fury mentions, like, fucking radioactive bug bites and mutants, man. It's crazy. So they talk about Spider-Man and the X-Men, dude. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, he mentions Hulk, Spider Man, and the X Men. It's fucking crazy, dude. It's really cool. I love seeing shit like this, man. Where it's like we see stuff from like back in the day, like you know, two thousand eight, and this this point. Yeah, and it's like, dude, it's so so cool, man. It's it's, it's really really cool seeing this stuff. Yeah, watch this. Very 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 interesting. They were trying to plant. I guess we're like trying to plant them seeds earlier. Thought they might be able to, but. Yeah, man. Like, could you imagine if they had like decided to like bring in like Tobey Maguire or some shit? Like, because I mean, the first Iron Man came out a year after Spider Man Three. Yep. So like that would have been nuts, dude. Like that would have been fucking crazy. And then the X Men obviously movies were still happening back too. I, I don't know. I don't know how or what they would have done, but uh, they were they were already thinking about it. So that's it's just cool seeing stuff. I think. Yeah, it's cool. Um, what else we got here? So again, in common and more common sense news, Dan Aykroyd, who does nothing but Ghostbusters, confirms that he will appear in Ghostbusters 2020. <laughs> Which this is like, you know, anyone could have guessed this, anyone knew about it, but it's been officially confirmed now. He's gonna appear in the movie. Yeah. You know, which you know, everybody who's still alive is gonna be in. Yeah, right. yeah, like Ernie Hudson confirmed. That Ernie Hudson him. is going to be in it. Uh, you know, I'm sure Bill Murray will be in it. You know, f- unfortunately, Harold Ramis is, will not be in it because passed away. Passed away, unfortunately. But everybody else is still alive. Will probably be in it. Sigourney Weaver is going to be in it. It's like you know, yeah, it, it makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to happen. Uh, What else we got? Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, the Birds of Prey released their poster, which I don't know if you've seen it or not. I've seen it and I hate it. You do? I don't like it at all. I'll post it in the uh, chat for those of you who have not seen it. I think it's it's really weird. I don't like it. I think it's really, really weird. Um... But I don't. I don't hate it. I just. It's just. It's just weird. I don't like it. It's just really, really weird. It kind of looks like. I mean, it does look like a poorly made Photoshop thing, especially with like them when the wings just like floating on her face or whatever. Yeah. It's 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 a little weird. I'm... I like the mind. I like the mind over mayhem thing though. I like you know. I think Harley looks cool. Rago Robbie kills it. Is 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 uh. Mm-hmm. Harley, but yeah, I don't know. The posters, it's not it's not the best thing, but I I don't think it's so. I've seen worse posters, also. I don't like it. But yeah, it's 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 weird. I'm, it not, weird a, I'm sure. not a fan of that poster. I hope I hope, to, I hope it's good though. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope the movie's good as well. Uh, moving on. Warner Brothers Animation Group is planning a Funko film based on the pop figures. So, like those... the, the pops are going to come alive and do shit, or what? I I guess so. Or is, it, mean, or is it a documentary about Funko? Or <laughs> I they're they're doing a a film based on the. I'm reading an article from Deadline. Okay. Okay. Warner Brothers has optioned rights to Funko, and Warner Animation Group will develop and produce a film based on the distinctive collector's figures. Lord, Lloyd Taylor has been set to write the script. Uh, let's see. Allison Abate, or executive VP of Warner Animation Group, will manage the partnership on behalf of the studio. Uh, Warner Animation group, uh, Group's upcoming releases include Space Jam 2, Scoob, and Tom and Jerry. Uh, Abate said the studio is excited to bring characters to life on the movie screens. Their fresh take on pop culture make these figurines incredibly appealing to fans of, to fans of all ages. Okay. Has Oscar-nominated director and designer t- crafted Disney. Oh, your director. Something is going on, Daniel. What happened? Your voice has gotten really weird. <laughs> really? Yeah, it got really what deep. Happened? I don't know. Really? Yeah, like it's really uh Still? <laughs> yes, it's very weird. <laughs> you guys I don't are know hearing... what happened. You guys are hearing this, right? I don't know what happened. Maybe man. we should restart the call. 
Uh, give, uh, give us one second, guys. Okay, I don't know why that happened. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, all right, I'm going to leave the call now. One second. One second. Is it, is it still like that? Nope, it's normal now. Okay, hold on. Let me, uh, there we go. I guess Discord got real fucky. Weird. <laughs> you have to. I go, hate. You have to go back and watch that later because that's hilarious. <laughs> I hate this, man. Literally every time we do this podcast, something goes wrong. I hate it. It's because we're using Discord, but we don't really have anything else. I hate uh, it. Anyway, it's uh, fine. So it's fine. That that took two seconds to fix. That's not a big deal. So yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I I guess they're just. I guess they're making. Uh, a movie like with the, the the pops, so uh I think, in my opinion, not just and this is not just as somebody who collects these things because I do, but mm-hmm. I think that this movie could either be good or bad, and I think if they they if they do if they stay on the course and path that the Lego movie did, that's what I was sitting here thinking. It'll like, be a good movie. It's like if they if do they the Lego do, way, the yeah, if they do the emoji movie route, then it'll be a piece of it turd. It'll be a bad movie. <laughs> so you have to do Lego movie instead of emoji movie, okay? That's that's my thoughts on this. So, you know. Same. My thoughts are the exact <laughs> They have to. That's what they got to do, okay? Go Lego movie route. Don't go. Hope, uh, like, like I always say, I hope everything is, everything that, I, you know, seems interesting to me is, is good, so. I, uh, I I always want movies to be good. I never want them to be bad. Same. Uh, the last thing that I have, which is kind of surprising that I don't have too much this week, but I, I, I've just been like, you know, there's been a lot. There was a lot that was happening this week, so I didn't, you know. Mm-hmm. I got a few things. Anyway, uh, Jurassic World Battle at Big Rock short film was released. Actually, and, uh, I did not watch this. The link is in the chat. It's kind of cool. It's like, this takes place after the last movie, Fallen Kingdom, and it's like you know it it, it it is kind of a spoiler alert, I guess, if you haven't seen the movie, because uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. At the end of the movie, dinosaurs are free and they are no longer just on the park; they're yeah, everywhere. Yeah. So, and you and you get to see that here as well. Um, yeah, the the main actor from this short film is Andre Holland, who uh, people may recognize from. Uh, I believe he was in. Uh, I think Moonlight. He was in that for sure. That's the thing I could think of. What else was he in? I'm trying to think, what the hell else was he in? I only I know him from Moonlight. I don't remember. I, I don't know what else he was in. I, I didn't actually watch this, so I don't have to. I didn't have time. I have no time anymore. It's yeah, I get you. It's going the opposite direction. It's too fast now. But yeah, I, I thought I thought the 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 short was was pretty interesting. Um, That's cool. We'll see how we'll see how it goes for the next movie. I, I call, also Colin Trevorrow directed the uh, the short. Which is the guy who directed the first Jurassic World movie, which I thought was good. I like the first Jurassic World movie, but I didn't like the second one. I like the first one. Yeah, the first one was good. I didn't like the second one, but uh, we'll see. Hopefully, they 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 get they get back to uh, you know the quality that I know the Jurassic Park can be. But yeah, that's that's all I got really for movie news. There's not a whole lot this week. You know, but that's fine. I got a couple things. All right, what you got? Uh, uh, the U.S. rights to a nightmare on Elm Street have reverted back to the West Craven estate. Hey. Uh, cool. So there, the good news is that there appears to be no third party standing in the way anymore of Craven's estate from making deals for the franchise or the I- or the iconic slasher. In other words, there's no current legal battle over the rights, allowing Craven's estate control over the franchise's future here in the United States. So keep an eye out. They'll probably, yeah. Everybody loves fucking Freddy Krueger, so there will probably be a more Nightmare on yeah. the Street coming soon. Especially with since like the horror movies have been making kind of a resurgence again within the past, like I don't know. 
I want to say like three years or something like that. I think I, I think for a while their horror movies were like so bad. They're like yeah. really, really awful. Like I, you got things like the fucking wax museum shit. And like... I've never, I've never really been a horror movie person. Like I like some of the older stuff. Like yeah, like Nightmare on Elm Street and like stuff like that. Like stuff we grew up with, right? Yeah, like right. the things we grew up with. That that's kind of stuff more I've been into. Mm-hmm. But I think, I think, I, I think recently, like within the past couple of years, they've been getting good again. Like I like the new it. I say the new one, but I mean. Chapter one, one, not chap, not chapter two that just came out. I, I haven't seen I it still yet. I haven't seen chapter one. Chapter one is good. I liked it. Uh, the Halloween movie that just came out, I thought was pretty decent. I haven't seen um, it. And there have been other stuff like I'm, that that's like, coming out more recently. I'm gonna watch a bunch because it's Halloween's coming out. I have to check out chapter two though for it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think for the past couple of years they've been getting better again. They've been, you know, Seems so hopefully. Be. Yeah, hopefully they'll they'll continue that path and the return uh, you know, of the icon we grew up with, Freddy Krueger. If they make Freddy good again, that'd be awesome. Cause yeah, I think the last reboot they did for Freddy was not the best. So oh. yeah, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, like old school Freddy Krueger man was fucking the shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> I like yeah, growing man. up. My, my grandmother Agreed. was huge. She, my grandmother was huge into horror. Movies, so she had them all, and we'd watch. We'd watch fucking Freddy Krueger and fucking Jason Voorhees. Heck yeah, dude. Hopefully, hopefully he'll come back and be good. Indeed, uh, my friend. Indeed. Next up, uh, I got some. Uh, so Netflix is, uh, well, not Netflix is Martin Scorsese's The Irishman Runtime. Oh, Irishman. Uh, officially confirmed to be two hundred nine minutes. That's three hours and twenty nine minutes. <laughs> If you like gangster movies like I do, Oof. you'll be looking forward to this because we got the return of some greats like Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci. Is Joe fucking... Pesci, right? Yeah, he's gonna be in it. After I just that's like, a that's a long movie though. It's gonna be a long movie, but I'm down. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm gonna watch it all. I love gangster movies. Love them. Absolutely love them. So I hope this is good. It's got all the it's got all the great people in it that I love. Like you know. And directed by director I love, and so that's, uh, yeah, crazy. And the last thing I have are some of the voice actors from Superman Red Sun animated movie, which Superman's oh. gonna be voiced by your boy Jason Isaacs. Really? Yep. Interesting. Okay. So for those of you that don't know, Red Sun, I believe, is let me pull it up exactly so I can read it to you. I didn't uh, know he was voicing Superman in this. That's cool, man. He is. Uh, I got a list of all the voice actors here. Uh, it is an adaptation of Mark Miller's acclaimed Superman Red Sun comic book. And it's an Elseworld Tales, which explores why it might have been had the last son of Krypton landed in the former Soviet Union rather yep. than a farm in Smallville, Kansas. The voice cast for Superman Red Sun include Jason Isaacs from Star Trek Discovery, as well as movies, Amy Ecker, Aker from The Gifted, as well as, like, other stuff. She's been in, like, a lot of things. That's Lois Lane. Mm-hmm. Um, Diedrich Bader, I guess is how you say his name, uh, as Lex Luthor. Okay. Vanessa Marshall from Star Wars Rebels as Wonder Woman. Ooh, okay. Uh, Phil Morris from Doom Patrol as James Olsen. Paul Williams as uh, Brainiac. And the other name on here... Uh, Oh, uh, you got Sasha Royce as Hal Jordan. You got Phil Lamar as Jon Stewart. Oh, yeah. You got Craig Smith from Batman Ninja as Batman. Hey, uh, Roger Craig Smith. And Travis Willingham, our boy from Critical Role, is going to be Superior Man. Dope. Um, you know, it's that's a dope tra- cast, man. It's a crazy cast, actually. That is uh, a dope voice cast. Published in 2003, Superman Red Sun reimagines the Man of Steel with the uh, with the infant Cal El crash landing in the Soviet Union as opposed to Smallville, where he is raised to be the champion of the common worker who fights a never-ending battle for Stalin, socialism, and the international expansion of the Warsaw Pact. It is stated for release in 2020. Cool. Definitely going to be looking forward to that. Always love those animated movies and Elseworld Me shit. Me too, man. Elseworld Same shit here. is some of the most fun. Because it just explores the weirdness. Yeah. Yeah, I love the Elseworlds stuff. I mean, I, I love DC shit in general, but you know. Yeah. 
looking forward to that for sure. All right, that's all I got for news. Cool. That's uh, that's all I have too. I mean, I don't have anything else. So. All right. Do you need a break, or do you just want to keep on rolling? Uh, how you feel? You want to just keep rolling, or you okay, want to we'll keep, we can keep rolling if you want, or we can take a break. All right, cool. We'll, we'll, all right, let's, let's just keep going. That's fine. All right, let's do it. So we're moving so, into our main topic. Yep. Yeah. Our favorite our main topic, war which is uh, just just war movies in general. Yeah, we're just going to we're just going to talk about some of our favorites, favorite stuff and things. Uh, uh, why don't you start us off? Okay. So, some of our favorite war movies, some that come to mind, obviously. Stuff like Saving Private Ryan, oh uh, Full Metal Jacket, you know, stuff like that is, is, is amazing. Uh, also, stuff like, you know, Black Hawk Down and... Mm-hmm. Uh, just even like more recent stuff too. You can talk about like uh, uh, Zero Dark Thirty or the Hurt Locker. Oh my God, Hurt Locker! Or, is so good. Uh, Hacksaw Ridge. Have you seen that? Hacksaw it's Ridge is good. Fury. Fury is amazing. Uh, Dunkirk. Have you seen that one? I'm actually not crazy over Dunkirk. Uh, there's so much stuff. I would you. Would you count Glorious Bastards, even though that's kind of like an alternate history type thing? I count it. Because oh, if you do, then that's another hell of it's, a good it's, one. It's, it's, a, it's a war movie. It's not necessarily yeah. like... It, it, I guess it's a war movie. It's not, it's not like a... Like, I guess none of these are like super accurate, but like, you know... Okay, yeah. In Glorious Bastards, that's another good one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean... So let's start off with uh, Saving Private Ryan. So... Okay. That's a good one. So. What 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 do you like about it, like the most? So, I I like following the character of of Tom Hanks. You know yeah. his his character, Tim Tim Miller, I, or something Miller. Yeah, something Miller. It's uh John Miller. His name is okay. Yeah, yeah. Captain I, I, John yeah. H. Miller. Captain John John. Ca- yeah, yeah. Captain Miller. Uh, I, I just like that whole unit that you have, right? You have him, you have uh, the sergeant, you have... Uh... Private Daniel Jackson, boy, played by <laughs> Barry Pepper, who's like everybody's yeah, favorite character in that movie. Just that whole, like, that whole unit, right? Like, the whole squad of everybody. Yeah, it was a good got, cast. Like... Yeah, I think, like, Vin Diesel's in it, too. He had a young Vin Diesel in it, which I didn't realize until years later that that was him. Yeah. You have, uh, what's his name, uh, Matt Damon as fucking Private Ryan. Yeah. Which you know, at a certain point in the movie, they're like Private Ryan, and they're like they confuse with him with like some other guy, and then it's like, oh, that's not actually your brother, right? It's like, oh no, it's it's because he has a he has like a, a bunch of other brothers and stuff, and I don't know. Th- this movie is just like when I think of war movies, it's like at the top of the top, dude. Like this is like the opening it's, alone. It's up there, man. Yeah, D-Day. like the D Day stuff is incredible. Uh, it is crazy. And I'm just looking at the cast because you had like fucking Paul Giamatti's in this movie. Fucking yeah, Paul Giamatti. Ryan Hurst is in this movie. Uh, Let's played, see. Who let, played Opie on Sons of Anarchy? Let me uh, let me open up the cast list as well. Uh, we have uh, Tom Sizemore. Ted Danson's in this. Uh, let's see, Adam Goldberg. Uh, it's it's a pretty solid cast. It is, it is a really really solid cast. Well, this movie, but yeah, this movie came out in 1998. That's... 1998. It's it's directed by uh, Steven one of, Spielberg, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, director of all time, Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Uh, it was written by Robert Rodat. Uh, and yeah, I mean the just the cast is is again it's it's phenomenal. Dude. This this movie is is incredible. Like I, I, I again, I mentioned it already, but like when I think of war movies, man, this is like, it's up there, dude. It's like, probably the one that comes to the top for me as well, just because. Yeah, it's, it's. I saw this it's, in it's, theaters. Oh if yeah, I, you, I didn't. I, I don't think it, I did. I was, I watched this with my dad. Uh, I was eight years old, so I was a little young to watch war movies. But, <laughs> but we went and saw it in the theaters, and I'll never forget that D-Day scene. Like it, especially like it just makes such an impression. And considering yeah, it came out in '98. And you look at that scene, it's fucking crazy. It's crazy. The opening is 27 minutes. 27 minutes of Omaha Beach D-Day. It's insane. 
And yeah, what uh, if you haven't seen Saving Private Ryan? What first of all, what the fuck? And I know, all, right? It's I it's like incredible, man. You. <laughs> it is it is absolutely incredible, man. Like. I I cannot say enough good things about this movie. It is crazy. I I also remember like uh hearing or 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 like I remember this movie like I remember hearing about that it hit hard for like actual World War II veterans. Yeah, or whatever I know, I know some it. people like had to leave theaters. Yeah, they were like, like, "Fuck this, dude!" Too like, this real. Is, yeah, it's too too real, man. I can't I can't watch this shit. You know. So like stuff like that is crazy, you know. Like it's it's nuts, dude. Like it's really, really nuts. Uh, yeah, but the basic premise of the movie is like you open up on D Day, you see all the landing, you kind of get to meet the squad, uh, Tom Hanks character and Barry Pepper and that whole gang. Barry Pepper's like my favorite character in this movie as the sniper, which you mm-hmm. get one of the most badass badass standoffs later in the movie. Uh. With sniper the versus the sniper versus sniper scene in that town, and fucking oh, yeah. shoots That's the dude through one. his scope. Um, so good. Uh, and they're they're searching for a paratrooper that has lost like all of his brothers, and they're trying to get him back as the last surviving member of the of all the brothers that enlisted, and they have to get him back, and it's a yeah. It's a journey, man, and it was very it was uh, made a fortune and has been pretty critically acclaimed, and it's a great movie. And if you haven't seen it, go watch fucking Saving Private Ryan. Uh, there was a game. Yeah. Uh, there was a game that came out a few years after this. Um, uh, after this movie came out, uh, called Sudden Strike, and they had like a bunch of um, missions that you could do, and one of them is a mission that's kind of like Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> It opens up with D-Day and you just fighting the Nazis and it's crazy. And I remember playing that and thinking, this is just like Saving Private Ryan. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh... Another thing about this movie, though, let's not forget, this is an Oscar award winning movie. Absolutely. It won like five Oscars, I think. Let's look here. I, I, I don't know which one. I don't remember which ones. It won Best we, we Director. I have it up right now. It won Best okay, Director cool. for Steven Spielberg. Which yeah, of course. It won best cinematography for a uh, cinematography. No, also makes sense. Yep. Best sound, which the sound we never mentioned. We don't. I don't think it ever gets the credit it deserves, but. But sound is very important to me. And it's like insane it's, it's... in this movie in particular. Yeah. 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 It won best film editing. And best sound effects editing. I think all those make sense. So yep, five Oscars. It also won a bunch of other awards at different uh, at different things. Yeah, that 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 adds up. Makes sense. How much money did this? Make? That's a good question. Because we're talking ninety eight movies didn't make as much money as they do nowadays. On its, on its opening weekend, like, it made thirty million. Stuff. In total, How much did it, it made, make overall. It was the yeah. highest grossing film, a uh, U.S. film of nineteen ninety eight. Of that year, okay. Overall, it made for that year, I guess. Its worldwide total was four hundred and eighty-one point eight million, which for ninety-eight. That's pretty good. That's crazy. That's crazy money. And not to mention what it gave us later, which was Band of Brothers. Which I know we're talking about war movies, but we can just make this like war. Yeah, we can totally talk about like Band of Brothers. Absolutely. Because Band of Brothers, we're talking about cast. If you look at the cast in that show, dude, there's a lot of people in that. Mm-hmm. That that, like, that that casting person, they Woo! they saw the future or something, man. Because god damn, that cast is bonkers, which, dude. Which it, which Band of Brothers also kind of launched, like Tom Hanks' past actor, right? Like it moved him into like directing more and being a producer and a screenwriter as well. So it's like, woof. I mean, Insane. Tom Hanks is the man, dude. He's he is. fucking awesome. I, I would love just to hang out with Tom Hanks. It's <laughs> cool, man. Uh, but yeah, for for some of uh, the Band of Brothers is crazy, which you follow the uh, Easy Company. Mm-hmm. And just all over Europe during World War II. We're, we're moving on to Band of Brothers now, or what? Yeah, let's talk about it if you want to. Let's do sure. it. Sure. All right, let's, let's do it. Uh, uh, Band of Brothers, a TV miniseries. 
uh, that I believe was in 2001. I think it's 10 episodes, 2001. Uh, I've watched it not too long ago again. I watched it a few. I, I like rewatched it like uh, several uh, years ago. I rewatch it every once in a while. It's so good. But yeah, it's like Josh said, Easy Company of the U.S. Army 101st Airborne Division uh, in you know World War II and stuff. And hell, hell of a show. You, you got, I mean, the the cast, you could just name names like all fucking day. Just how, yeah, like you got Damian like Lewis how, in there. You got Scott they, Grimes was, in there. <laughs> yeah, it's Scott Grimes. You have you uh, Donnie Wahlberg's in there. Michael Cudlitz. You have uh, fucking uh, Neil, what's his Neil name? McDonough's Fassbender. Michael Fassbender. I think Tom Hardy's in this. Uh, Colin Hanks is in an episode. Uh, Kirk Acevedo. You have uh, just uh, Neil McDonough. You have names after names, man. Like A very young Tom Hardy just... makes an appearance. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mentioned him, Tom Hardy. Uh, just like the cast, this show, the cast, the, the cast. casting director. Who is the casting director on this? By the way, Jimmy Fallon's in this. Yeah. Like I'm telling you guys, like this cast is just incredible. The people that Dominic are in Cooper's it. in this. Man, I mean. Some of them, some of them are as prominent as others. They'll show up for an episode or two, or even just for a scene or two. Yeah, yeah. But it's I mean, still this, crazy. This, yeah, like it's 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 crazy, dude. It really is crazy. And very very highly historical, showing like. So I also recommend if you've never seen this miniseries, check it out. It's only ten episodes. It is damn good, man. It it's is damn good. So good. So good. The cast is phenomenal. Uh, two thousand one miniseries. Band of Brothers. It's so good, dude. Like it's and I know it won, I say that to a lot of things, but this this is It won a bunch of Emmys, so, <laughs> so. There you go. Fucking Sam Private Ryan won some Oscars. This one won some Emmys. There you go. Yeah. Won, we we talk about award winning stuff here. No, I'm kidding. Uh it won seven Emmys. Yeah. So good. I remember I remember when it aired. Watched it. It really is good. Um, yeah, I mean, just each episode like is incredible. Like they're they're all good. It's it's good from start to finish. And I, I rewatch this. Yeah, like every I don't know, every once in a while. I haven't seen it in a few years again, but you know, now that we're talking war stuff, uh, you know, uh, uh, there there there's a few things that I would want to rewatch, like movies and stuff too, for sure. This would be one of the things that I would want to rewatch. Uh huh. But yeah, I mean, just yeah, I mean, Damian Lewis again. He's like the main guy in this, and he's he's fucking great, in it, man. He's so good. Simon Pegg's in this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody, every, everybody's in the show, man. Everybody's James McAvoy. Yeah, it's crazy. Sorry, I'm just like I'm just scrolling through, and I'm like, we didn't say yeah, that like, name. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, no. If if you keep scrolling, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you if you you can just keep talking about names in this like all fucking day because there's so many people in this. In- like bonkers, man. The casting director on this show did a hell of a job. Yeah, and like Josh said, even though certain people are only in it for like an episode or two, or even just a scene, or they 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 might only have like five minutes of screen time or whatever. It's it's still crazy the amount of people and the amount of names that are in this. Like it's it's fucking nuts. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this is a uh, really really good. Um. Uh, TV, a war TV miniseries show. So, good stuff. Uh, okay. What do you want to talk about now? What other movie you got? Uh, let's talk about Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal that's, Jacket. That's one. Oh, wait, well, hold on. Before we we move on from that, an, an, another thing that spawned from uh, Band of Bros is another uh, miniseries called The Pacific. I haven't actually seen all of The Pacific. Which uh, I th- I think is I I also enjoy it. It may not be as good as Band of Brothers, but I think it's still really really good. Again, another mini series that's ten episodes long. Uh, this is about obviously the Pacific, you know, and with with Japan and and you know again World in World War Two and stuff. So Pacific Theater. If you're into that kind of yeah, it's the Pacific Theater. So if you're if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. Uh, if you want to know, Tom Hanks is a narrator. For uh, the Pacific, 
And if you want to know who's in it, like casting wise, I'll give you guys some stuff. Uh, Rami Malik is in it. He's uh, one of the guys. So I mean, there, there, there's other people in here. Like, uh, let's see, who who do we got? John uh, Berenthal's in it. Yeah, John Berenthal's in it. Your boy, the Punisher. Yep, yep. So I mean, yeah, just just check it out. I think it's cool, especially if, if you're into World War II stuff and the the Pacific theater side of things, because the, the Band of Brothers is like the, the the Europe, like Germany, you know, Nazi kind of stuff, and this is on the other side of things. You know, it's it's like you know the pacific theater so it's focused on the japanese and you know that 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 you know side of the war um but yeah definitely i i recommend that as well if you haven't seen it so just wanted to bring that up before we move on to full metal jacket yeah yeah it bears mentioning uh full metal jacket full metal jacket i'll be honest with you it's it's a good movie but it can be hard to watch because it's brutal sometimes <laughs> Uh, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, mm. I could see that for sure. Uh, it's it's something that I agree. Like especially the stuff with uh, Gomer Pyle, you know. Yeah. Uh, played by Vincent D'Onofrio. Which, yeah, speaking of, of we're talking about Johnny Bernthal on the last show. Somebody in the uh, you know Netflix Marvel universe, yeah, fucking uh. Wilson Fisk, uh, yeah. Kingpin's in this one. As uh, again, we mentioned Private Pile. This is the first thing that I saw Vincent D'Onofrio in. I think Full Metal Jacket. This yeah, is like so, where I recognize him from. So Full Metal Jacket came out in 1987. It was directed, co-written, and produced by Stanley Kubrick. And what Stanley it does, Kubrick. Is it follows a platoon of U.S. Marines through their boot camp training and their deployments over into uh, Vietnam uh, during the Tet Offensive. Uh, uh, but yeah, I haven't actually watched Full Metal Jacket in a while, so. Hmm. It's been, I think it's been a while for me as well. Uh huh. It's been a, I don't, I'm, I'm meant to watch it, but yeah, it's got a good cast in it, man. It does. Like Matthew Modine is in it, who's Private Joker. I think people nowadays will recognize him as uh Brenner from Stranger Things. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's that's him. Private Joker is 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 a brander from Stranger Things, wow. and then and then Adam Baldwin, who was uh, in Firefly, you recognize him. I love Adam. He Baldwin. was in this as Animal Mother. Uh, yeah, he's in that. Uh, who else might people recognize? Okay. Obviously, Vincent D'Onofrio. Arlie then... Ermy, man. Fucking Arlie Gunny. Ermy, man. Yeah, Fucking man. Gunny. Gunny. Playing yeah. Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, who is an absolute hard ass in this movie. He is. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff he says in this movie that would not oh fly nowadays. Oh my god, you will fucking lose your like, shit. So if you if you're gonna watch this movie, be warned that this is in the '80s, and uh, this movie was made in the '80s, and it's uh you know, there's things that are said in this movie that you know, mm -hmm. they may may offend you, maybe not. I don't know. It, some of it's gross. Some of it, some of it'll crack you up. Like it's just like that's there ridiculous. are some things that, that I could say right now, but I'm gonna choose not to. <laughs> just yeah, just you know, if, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then uh... watch it. Maybe don't watch it. I don't know. It's a good movie. Watch it. But yeah, if you're offended easily, then I don't know what to tell you. Just you know, just keep in mind this is a movie from a different time. Okay. Yeah, it's the. Uh... I like it a lot, but it's just. It's, I like it's a, it a lot too. It's it's a, it's a really good movie. I, some, I, sometimes it's just a hard watch for me. That's all. Pretty yeah, pretty. no, I get you. Uh, it, it it had Oscar nominations too. I don't know if it won anything though. Uh, I don't. I don't know if it did. I don't think it. I don't know. Anything. I know it was nominated. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head, but. Yeah. It was Oscar nominated for Best Adapted Screenplay, but I don't think it won. Mm. But I think it's a movie that everybody should go see at least once. Yeah, like more movie wise, this is one of the ones that I definitely like. It, it definitely comes to mind for sure. Um, Good cast. Uh, deals, yeah. deals with some heavy shit. Definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, they, again, it, they go through. Uh, 
the boot camp stuff, and then later on they actually ship them out, and you know it, it goes through that, and it's yeah, it's good, man. Which... Yeah, it's uh, we we're talking about World War Two stuff earlier. This is the Vietnam War one. So, yep. yep. Uh, speaking of Vietnam, if we're if we're ready to move on from Full Metal Jacket, yeah, uh, platoon. Yeah, platoon. Platoon. Platoon, platoon, platoon. It's got uh, your boy Charlie Sheen in it, Willem Dafoe. The, the, the directed by Oliver Stone. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Keith David also, and it yeah. probably has some a uh, very young Johnny Depp's in this movie. Johnny Depp is in it, yeah. yeah. John C. McGinley, which people may recognize as the Doctor Guy from Scrubs, if you've uh-huh. seen that. Uh-huh. Um, uh, Forrest Whitaker's in this. Yep. Crazy cast when you look at it. Yeah, it's it's, it's not. I, I haven't seen this movie in like forever, so I don't. There's not a whole. I don't remember too much from it because I, I would have to rewatch it. But yeah, it's a good movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which it's it's more of an anti-war film. Uh, mm-hmm. It shows very brutal, um, very brutal and not pretty sides of the Vietnam War. But and, you know, shit happens. That's, that's war. That's war, baby. I that's feel like war, I feel man. like I'm disconnecting it a little bit. I was like, yeah, like some bad shit happened, and we don't always want to cover it up. It should be when they make movies of it. It should be out there. Is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But yeah, shows Charlie Sheen as somebody that uh, Private Chris Taylor, who gets shipped to Vietnam, and it's kind of torn between two different groups within the. Within their division or whatever, uh, Tom Berenger's character is crazy, and Willem Dafoe's character is great. So it's good, and it has probably one of the most parodied scenes ever, which is <laughs> the arms up, you know. Yeah, that. Uh, like you see you know, it that, all that, the time. That thing, it's everywhere. Yeah. All the time, but it's a great movie. Uh, go check it out. Um, Vietnam, another Vietnam War. Yep, film. another Vietnam War film had a, a it's a hit. My dad still watches this movie. Yeah, this is one of the ones for me that I have to rewatch because I have I think not it's seen on it Netflix. In so long, I think it is. Yeah, you watch it? I I can double check right now. Let me open up my Netflix. Uh, there's parts in this movie that are hard to watch. I'll say that. Platoon. It is on Netflix. A lot of these war movies are R rated. That we're talking about. Right it's, a, now. it's a two hour movie. Yep. Yeah, I have to rewatch it. I just haven't seen it in so long. Been a hot minute for me. Uh, its budget was six million. It made a hundred and thirty-eight point five, so it made its money back. Mm. They have a documentary on them filming this movie. God, the, oh like, really? It, it sounded like filming it was hard. <laughs> Jeez, I mean, yeah, I can imagine, right? Yeah, uh, it follows a U.S. Army volunteer fighting in a war while his two sergeants, played by Berenger and Defoe, argue over the leadership of the platoon. Platoon. Name drop. No yep. credits. Another good flick, so go check that out. For sure. Anything else popping out at you that you want to mention at this time? Uh, for platoon? For platoon, for a new movie, for anything you want to talk about. I mean, I got other movies we can talk about. All right, what you uh, got? Like, you know, there's uh, what else should we talk about? I'm just, I'm trying to think of things, things like, like Apocalypse Now, or something that I think of. I've actually, I, I can... I've actually never watched Apocalypse Now. No, mm. I've never really gotten a chance to see it. Let's check it out. Yeah. See, I'm, it, I'm it, mostly it, thinking old movies at the moment. Like we've talked about. Yeah, like, yeah I mean, this is a 1979 movie, and another because we're talking, we're on the topic of Vietnam. Apocalypse Now is another Vietnam movie. Yeah. Uh, 1979, you know, was directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Uh, it's got Marlon Brando, Martin Sheen, Robert Duvall, Lawrence Fishburne, Harrison Ford's in it. You know, just, just a bunch of like those older, like you know, actors from the fucking 70s and 80s and stuff. It has a uh, one of the most quoted lines in it, even though I've never seen the movie. I know the fucking quote: I "Love the smell of napalm in the morning." <laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah, uh, is uh, let me check if this is on Netflix because if it is, maybe you should check it out. Let me see. Army's in this too. <laughs> oh, f- uh. apocalypse! No, I don't, I don't think it is on Netflix, but I would I would recommend checking this movie out as well. Again, this is a movie from 1979, so remember it's yeah. you know it's an older movie. This this goes for everybody, not just you. Like, like, yeah, like you're. 
Look, guys, when we're talking about movies from like the fucking seventies. Yeah, we're talking like, <laughs> like the 80s, you, yeah. 70s from 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 not our time. You gotta okay? look through it through the window of the time it was made. Okay. Hop hop into the DeLorean and then come with us into the yeah. you know, into the past. All right. Open that DeLorean door up and hop into the hop in. Uh, but yeah, the, that's just another one that I wanted to mention. I'll give you guys a little synopsis. A U.S. Army officer serving in Vietnam is tasked with assassinating a renegade Special Forces colonel who sees himself at. So there's your little synopsis. Maybe that'll get you interested. Maybe not. It's a two and a half hour movie. So it's maybe it's a little bit longer than most people are, uh, check out, but check it out. It's rated R too. So again, like I said, we've moved, we've moved into the dark and heavy. <laughs> Right yeah, we're, we're, yeah. I mean, there's you know. so, there's some old war movies that actually aren't like um, super brutal and crazy. Like uh, the one that always springs to my mind is Kelly's Heroes, which is a fucking heist movie set in World War Two, <laughs> which uh, is one of my favorite movies. Um, so if we can swap over to that, we'll talk about that. Sure. This was made. I don't know if you have you ever seen Kelly's Heroes. Uh, I. It sounds familiar. I don't know if I have, though. So, this movie was made in 1970. It had a cast starring... It had Clint Eastwood, Telly Savalas in it, Don Rickles was in it, Carol O'Connor's in it, Donald Sutherland's in it, and it follows a infantry division uh, that uh, they learn that uh, there's a shipment of gold being held at a bank in town, and they decide to go rogue and go rob oh, it. Shit. It's, it's Nazi. It's Nazi gold. They're going to go steal it. And it follows the them. It's a yeah, it's a war film, but it's got it's got comedy in it. And I don't even I don't even think it's rated R. What is this? Rated? It might be rated R. Hmm. I'll actually see. It's uh, I think it's I don't think it's rated R. I've never seen this movie, but I don't think it is. I don't think it is either. Yeah, I haven't seen this. It sounds it sounds really cool though, dude. I, I, it sounds something like I want that I would want to check out. It's fun. You should check it. It's 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 got moments of it's comedy and stuff. It's got Harry Dean Stanton in it, who's fucking in everything. Mm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they go they go a wall to rob a bank behind the enemy lines, and they practically win World War Two. So. <laughs> <laughs> the heist wins World War Two. Uh, but they all got really cool names like. Um, Clint Eastwood obviously plays Kelly, but then they have characters named like Big Joe, uh, Crap Game, uh, Oddball, uh, Little Joe, Cowboy. Like it's just like it's a fun, it's a fun heist war movie. Um, you can go check it out. <laughs> it has a really good song in it too. Um, cool, yeah. I, I don't know much about it. Like uh, Clint, I mean Clint Eastwood's, you know. Fucking Don Rickles is in this. He is. He's great in his movie. I love Don. Donald Rickles. Sutherland's in this. Dang. Yeah, he bad, plays. Man. He plays Oddball. It was like probably the standout in this movie. Cool man. Uh, yeah, I definitely, I definitely have to check it out though. It didn't make a big fortune, but it's fun. It's fun. I have it. On, I have it on DVD. Cool. Uh. Uh. Moving on from Kelly's Heroes, which go watch it if you want. It's funny. It's hilarious. It's good and actiony. So. Uh, moving on from that though uh, the next thing I want to talk about is Where Eagles Dare have you ever seen Where Eagles Dare I don't believe I have so Where Eagles Dare Where Eagles Dare so, yeah I don't think I've seen another Clint Eastwood huh? this is another Clint Eastwood war movie but this is more they're kind of spies they're like um, uh, I don't know if you call them spies they're like infiltrators yeah so yeah it's based on a book uh, it's made in 1968 and it was a British movie and it, it had okay. a fairly small cast. It had Richard Burton, Clint Eastwood, um, and then most of the others are kind of forgettable. Those are like the big ones. Um, the film, uh, the film involves some of the top filmmakers of the day, and is it's considered a classic now. Um, uh, cool, cool. But but if you watch the movie, it feels very. Uh, I feel like Escape from Castle Wolfenstein took some uh, inspiration. inspiration from it, definitely, because there, there's a fucking big ass castle that they gotta like infiltrate, and there's like double agents within this group, and it's 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 got some 
great twists and turns in it, and you're like, who can you trust? Like, like they land. So they're like a group of commandos sent to rescue like a, a general behind. So that's behind enemy lines. But there's also a double agent and starts killing people off. And they're trying to figure out who it is. It's insane. It's. I dig this movie. Cool. I got to check it out. I haven't seen it. Uh, but yeah. It's but yeah, very, Clint, Clint Eastwood's yeah. good, man. So I, I, you know, he's. Doesn't have a lot of. Uh, it out. And unlike Kelly's Hero, there's not a lot of comedy in this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, but it's also not like a super action heavy one either like there's action in it yeah but a lot of it's kind of intrigue and spy shit which i dig oh. hmm. there's a lot of tension that's the word I'm okay about. there's a lot of tension in this gotcha gotcha cool man I'll, I'll, I'll definitely have to add that to this list of movies that i need to check out yeah I'm trying to think i got something here's uh got? here's another older movie where, where you know War Eagles Dare was in the 60s, right? This was a 68 movie. Mm-hmm. Or 69 or whatever, or late 60s. Album from 1965. It's called Von Ryan's Express. I haven't seen this. I haven't even heard of it. And this has Frank Sinatra in it. He's oh the main goodness. character. Yeah, Frank Sinatra is the main guy. Uh, I'll give you a little synopsis here. An American POW leads a group of mainly British prisoners to escape from the Germans in World War II. So yeah, Von uh, Colonel Joseph L. Ryan is uh frank sinatra and yeah it, it's 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 cool man like i remember uh here's i'll show you a poster check this out tell me what you think about this i'll post it in the chat for everybody else as well it's a hell of a long link but oh never mind that link didn't work i pulled up the wiki i see the poster it looks dope. okay yeah it's it's interesting right it's it's cool though, man. I, I the poster says, "Why did six hundred Allied prisoners hate the man they called von Ryan more than they hated Hitler?" <laughs> so that's the fucking poster, okay? Uh yeah. It's it's the main character is Frank Sinatra, you know, the singer. Yes, the Frank Sinatra, the singer. He's the main character in this movie. Uh, he's a pretty good actor. Some shit, too. Yeah, man. It's uh again from nineteen sixty five. Uh. It's an American movie. Uh, this was based off the novel, I think, called Ryan's Express. I feel like a lot yeah. of the war movies are based off novel. novels. Yeah. Novels. Yeah. yeah. So there's a, obviously a movie called that. Is, it has like a train in it. Of course, it has a train in it. Um, But it's cool, man. Yeah, for, it's, it's, it's one that I like... Had for like I forgot to like I, I wasn't thinking about it right away, but as we were like digging into these deeper like movies in the sixties, I was like, well, wait a minute, this is yeah, I, I love going back and watching older movies. Yeah, this is one that I would recommend you check out as well. It's not as long as some, this; it's only like an hour fifty-seven, I th- is what it says here. Uh, it's cool, man. I, I like it. I recommend it. I'll check you know. It out. Check it out. Yeah, yeah. Von Ryan's Express. I, 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 I suggest you guys check it out as well. Uh, again, this is another World War II one. But uh, like yeah, my, cool, my next three or four movies that I have are World War II movies, and they're like. There you go, man. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to move on from that, mm-hmm. I have one. Well, I'm surprised we haven't mentioned yet. Uh, the Great Escape. Oh. How have we not mentioned The Great Escape? Dude, there's there's gonna be so many that we're not gonna be. From 1963, this movie came out the year before my dad was born. <laughs> Steve McQueen. You got your boy Steve McQueen. I love Steve McQueen. Uh, uh, you got James Garner. You got Richard Attenborough. Fucking Charles Bronson. Dude. Charles Bronson's in this. Donald Pleasance is in this. Uh, James Coburn is in this. It's a pretty. I, I've never. I don't think I've seen this. And you've never seen The Great Escape. No, I don't buddy, think I've seen this one. Buddy, I have to watch it, dude. This cast is dope. You need to watch it. It's so good. Yeah, I have to, I have to check it, it out. It's based on real <laughs> events. I, I, I'm glad we're watching this. Dude. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm watching this. I'm glad we're talking about this so that I can watch these things, man, that yeah. I haven't seen, man. Yeah, this film's based on real events. Uh, they, uh, so you can go look this shit up. Uh, Allied prisoners of war plan for several hundred of their number to escape from a German camp during World War II. Yeah, okay. they're trying to do the biggest escape that they can. They have like three tunnels. <laughs> I mean, I guess with a name like that, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
God, it's so good. I've, there's no, yeah, you should watch it. It's great. Um, yeah, first-hand yeah, account I'm, of Mass Escape by British Commonwealth. Yeah. I'm going to have to check it out. It's an older one, but it's good. It's good. You'll love Steve McQueen in it. Uh, God, it's, a lot of the characters in it. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, I'll, yeah! I'll have to check it out because I don't. Yeah, I, have, I'm, I don't think I don't think I've ever seen it. I feel so. like it's one of the most. Um... It's one of the like, I, I've I've heard about it, but I've never I've never seen it. Yeah, a lot of people know the Great Escape, so you should definitely. Yeah, check yeah, it yeah, out. yeah. It's one of those that I've 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 heard about for sure, but I just, I just haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, man, that's that's cool, dude. That's that's cool stuff. I definitely have to give that one a uh, look. One of the highest grossing yeah. films of 1963. Sweet. It's referenced a lot in popular culture. Well, Simpson, fucking video games. I'm sure, man. Yeah, I'm sure it has been. All over the place, huh? I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm just amazed. I'm looking at the cast again because the cast. The cast. The <laughs> no, cast no, hey, crazy. Those names. Those names. Are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. Had some good stunts in it too. Yeah. Uh, uh, moving on from that, I got another. <laughs> I got one that's a comedy drama. That's a war film. Oh. What you uh, got? From 1953. So this is an oh, old. Oh wow. One. This is yeah, an old. Josh is, Josh is pulling out the oldies. No, here, yeah, man. but I really love this movie. It's called Stalag. It's it's called Stalag Seventeen. Um, Stalag. I, I definitely haven't seen this one. Uh, has, uh, I don't think I've even heard of this one. This is, it has William Holden in it, and he won an Oscar for this movie. Uh, okay. Which is uh, it's a prisoner of war camp movie, and um, when two escaping American World War II prisoners are killed, the German POW camp barracks black marketeer J.J. Sefton is suspected of being an informer. Yeah, yeah, and they're and they're trying to figure out if he is one, or or what's going on. And you don't even really know until later on in the movie. So it's really cool. It's a really cool movie. Um, it's cool. it's got some great. It's mostly comedy. I, I feel like Hogan's Heroes took a lot of inspiration from it. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it's also got some drama and like some heavy shit in it. So. I'm down with some co- like comedic stuff too. You know. Yeah. It's good. That it's worth cool. it's worth watching. I enjoy it. Yeah, again, I- I'm glad we're doing this because I can add a bunch of these to my like to watch list because I I really have there's a bunch of these that I have not even it's seen. It's old, it's old as shit, but it's good. <laughs> nice. Uh, go check it out. That's I don't have a nice lot to say nice. on it because I can't say much without actually spoiling the movie. But I feel like some of oh. it shouldn't be spoiled without watching it. All right, that's fine. It's uh, yeah, some of these we're just gonna mention and you know like you know like you know they're they're you know stuff that you should check out, right? It was a success for its time. Heck yeah, man. Cool, and, Hol- cool. and Holden won an Academy Award for Best Actor. For me. Yeah, it's his one one Oscar. Cool. Five no- out of five nominations, it got well, it got a win. Cool. Uh huh. Uh, next up, I got another one. <laughs> All right. Uh, nineteen fifty seven. Oh damn. The Bridge Over the River Kwai. Okay. Yes, this one I have heard about. Uh, I, I haven't, haven't seen, seen it. it. I haven't seen it in a but, long time. But I know someone who's in it. Yeah, that's uh, why that's I brought my it up. boy uh, <laughs> Sir Alec Guinness is in it. Your boy Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, I've I've heard about this movie a lot. I just haven't seen it because it's like one of those like super old school movies that I just. It, it's one of those like Lawrence of Arabia like mm-hmm. old school movies that like that everybody talks about. That's like a fucking classic or whatever that you have mm-hmm. to watch. And I just haven't seen them, dude, because you know. I obviously didn't grow up like watching these movies or anything because they're like way before my time. Uh, but I, you know, I I, I check them out. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm I still want to check them out for sure. Yeah, this is a the reason I know a lot of these old movies is because of my old man, right? My dad, who's a war buff and watches all this stuff. Um, uh, but this one is like they're prisoners and they're being forced to build a bridge and they're like clashing. I think there's kind of a clash between two of the characters. Uh, because uh, I don't even remember exactly what it is. I just remember it's a good movie, and I haven't seen it in a while. So, cool. Check man. it, check it out. It's got a cast. It's got William Holden, Alec Guinness. Yeah, I, I this is one that I, I definitely, again, I've heard about a lot. I just have to check it out because it's one of those older movies that I have not seen. 
And that's probably where I'm going to stop talking about movies. If you want to talk, keep talking a little bit about a couple more movies, since I went off and did like three. Because I feel yeah, like yeah. I feel like this is a topic we can revisit, right? Sure, sure, sure. So um, what, what do you want to talk about? I don't know. I, mean, I, like, I could I could name off a few more, but I feel like some of these I haven't seen in so long that I feel like I don't want to mm-hmm. just like mention them and, and drop them. I'll mention a few more though. Like we mentioned earlier, Hacksaw Ridge. We'll talk about that one. For yeah, a bit. Hacksaw it, Ridge. Right? I have seen. I've seen it twice. It's a good movie. Yeah, Hacksaw Ridge is good. It has it's it's a new it's a newer movie. It's 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 three years old. It came out in 2016. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one has Sam Worthington and Andrew Garfield in it, and you know it's 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 cool. It's good stuff, man. I I I enjoyed it again. Another World War II movie. Uh, Army medic Desmond T. Doss, who served in the Battle of Okinawa, refuses to kill people and becomes the first man in American history. To receive the Medal of Honor without firing a shot. Yep, he's a conscientious, conscientious object, uh, objector. And, ba- and a real person, based on a real person. Yeah. By the way, E.T. Dibs. So yeah, Andrew Garfield uh, plays uh, this man. He's also got uh, Hugo Weaving and Vince Vaughn are also in this movie. Oh, right, yeah, 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 that's true. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's good stuff. It's one of the, like, Better war movies in recent years for sure. I, I mm-hmm. would recommend it for to people if you want to check it out. Okay. I think I've seen this movie like once or twice, and I like you know I like it so. Yeah. It's a, another another rated R movie. Two hours and nineteen minutes. Uh, I th- did this movie win any Oscars? I think maybe it, it did. It won. Know. It won a lot of. It got six nominations. Uh, okay. it, it won awards for best sound mixing and film editing. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, uh, but, but it this... also won a bunch of other awards, not Oscars, though. Gotcha. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, this, I, I just wanted to bring this up quickly because this is again one of the better, like, uh, more recent film. More recent, uh, you know, war movies. Um, yeah. Uh, we could talk about Fury. Have you, have, you, have you seen that one? I love Fury. Fury is good stuff, man. The cast, the main group of guys is really dope. Uh, Fury, a movie from 2014, directed by David Ayer. Another reason why this movie is in my mind a lot is because last night I was watching the, the Hot Ones interview with Shia LaBeouf. Oh, goodness. And he's in this movie. That's right. He plays... Uh... Yeah. Which, I by the way, that, that that Hot Ones interview, if you haven't seen it... I have not seen it. Shia is, Shia is a cool dude, man. He's a cool fucking guy. You gotta check it out, man. That'll, that'll make you like Shia more if you don't like him or, you know... If you don't I don't really, really have care. an opinion on him. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, that, that interview, him eating those Hot Ones, you like him more, dude, because he's, he's a good guy. <laughs> but yeah, this cast is, is bonkers, dude. You got yeah. Brad Pitt, Shia LaBeouf, Logan Lerman, Michael Pena, uh, John Bernthal... Jason Isaacs, Scott Eastwood. Speaking of Clint Eastwood, that's his yeah, son. His Scott son Eastwood Scott is in this Eastwood. movie. Uh, and yeah, man, this this movie's cool, dude. I I think I've only seen it once. Seen it a couple times. I've only seen it once, but I liked it. Uh, I, I yeah, I, I this is one of the ones that I would want to rewatch just because I you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like there's there's something I, I just have to rewatch it because you know yeah so the basic premise a, is that uh, there are u.s tank crew in nazi germany in the sherman called yeah. fury and they all have nicknames mm-hmm. and uh my favorite line from the movie is when he screams back to them at german in german to give him more pigs to slaughter <laughs> i love that <laughs> line he's fucking up there on a machine gun and just fucking screaming shit at the nazis oh it's a good movie it's uh oh i love this it's it. good stuff. Yeah, I, I need to rewatch it again. I don't. Is this on Netflix? I don't know. Damn, I wish some of the. Uh, it's. I don't think it is. I wish more of these were on Netflix. Because I want to. I'm, I'm. I have. Now that we're talking about this, I have like an urge to like rewatch all this stuff. My only thing is, I, anyway, wish I, I wish I'd gotten to see this in theaters. Because man, mm, it yeah. Made on a big screen. This movie's rated R, two hours fourteen minutes. Uh, released in 2014. Again, it was directed by David Ayer, who people may recognize, who directed Suicide Squad. Uh, you know, he also directed stuff like End of Watch, things like that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, this, is, this yeah. is the movie that made like Undercut super popular again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's 
see. What else can we mention here? We'll, we'll probably only mention a couple more, and then that will probably be it, right? So we can we've, save stuff for another we've time. We've been going for uh, two, two and a half hours now. About, so. All right. Well, let's. Uh, I got a few more. Let's. Uh, well, that we'll quickly talk about. We don't have to like go super. Yeah, in depth. yeah, we'll yeah. Talk. Well, and we're gonna do this again, again after probably we'll watch some movies at some point in the future. Yeah, yeah. So I mentioned earlier also like in Glorious Bastards. This, you know, it's another a Tarantino movie. Uh, another two. another World War Two Nazi occupied France in World War Two. A plan to assassinate Nazi leaders. By a group of Jewish U.S. soldiers coincides with the theater owner's vengeful plans for the same. Brad Pitt in this one, too. Uh, got Brad Pitt, yeah, Christoph Waltz, Eli Roth, Michael Fassbender, Daniel Bruhl, B.J. Novak. Uh, it's a good movie. Great movie. If you think movie. about it, it's got a crazy cast in it, too. It does, yeah, yeah. Fucking Diane Kruger, man. Oh, my God. Fucking Eli Roth coming out with that goddamn bat. It's so good. <laughs> This was released in 2009. This is a 10 year old movie, dude. Does it this is a 10 year old like it. movie. It doesn't feel like it. I know, right? It came out on August 21st, 2009. This is a more than a 10 year movie. That's, that's crazy, dude. It's two hours and a half. And of course, as you would expect, rated R because, you know, Tarantino. Yeah. But it's good stuff. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. Uh, you know, because who doesn't like to see Nazis get fucked? Exactly. So check it out. It's good stuff. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I think most people who've seen it enjoy it. So I, you know, I don't see why you wouldn't watch it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's, here's one that I also mentioned earlier. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it for a bit as well, because again, I mentioned it earlier at the, at the top when we were about to start talking about this. Yeah. Black Hawk Down. Black Hawk uh, Down. Directed by Ridley Scott. This was, I think, the movie he did after Gladiator, right? I think so. Because Gladiator was 2000, and this movie was like 2001. So I feel like he did this after Gladiator, which is, which I mean, Gladiator. I mean, it's not a war movie, but like, dude, like, watch Gladiator if you haven't. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> for those for those people out there who have not seen it. Uh, but I think this movie won some Oscars, right? Black Hawk Down? I think so. Maybe. Cast, the cast maybe, was crazy. Maybe you can double check, but... The cast, yeah, Josh Hartnett, my boy Ewan McGregor, Eric Bana, who, by the way, we talked, we were talking about Troy earlier. He's in that. I like Eric Bana. Yeah, Eric Bana's in this. Uh, yeah, I mean William Fitchner. It's just this is a pretty solid. Tom Sizemore. All these, all these, a lot. Here's here's a common Jason thing Isaac's in all these in this movies. Too. <laughs> yeah, here's here's another common thing in all these war movies. The cast for these movies are are they cool. are right? They're all good. Yeah, man, it's really really good stuff. So. Yeah, if you haven't uh, checked this out, I, uh, this is another one of those movies that I haven't seen in a hot minute. But like, I think I think this one is on Netflix, so I might have to like. Your, your do a boy rewatch. Jamie Lannister's in this movie. <laughs> oh, is he? Yeah. Oh man. He's yeah. I remember him. He's in it. I I don't think I've seen this movie since I've seen Game of Thrones. So I don't that's, think that's I have how, either. That's how. Long that I just that just goes to show how how I don't remember him because and and it, it goes to show how long I've seen it too, man. Cause I haven't seen this in so long, dude. I I I, I found I did I did search up on Netflix and it is on Netflix, so I'm gonna have to do a rewatch. Cause I, I need to watch it. I haven't watched nope. it in a while. I might watch that. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to check it out because it's 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 fucking cool, man. Oh yeah, he fucking Nikolai is in this movie, dude. Yeah, totally. And yeah, and then and then Jake in the chat brings up Tom Hardy. Yeah, he's in this too. Yep, he's the guy that tries to cut off his cast. Orlando Bloom is in this. I think he is. Yeah, man. There's Ty Burrell. There's there's there's, there's some people in this, man. Again, all the all these war movies have pretty uh, pretty solid cast. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, 2001, directed by Ridley Scott. Another rated R, two and a half hour movie. Uh, good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. Which you know we mentioned uh, Josh Hartnett was in this. That I'm gonna. I'm gonna step aside from the good war movies for a little bit. Let's talk about one that is not so good. Okay. Pearl Harbor. <laughs> uh, why why Josh, would you bring that up? <laughs> because Josh Hartnett. We were talking about him. Oh, in that's Black Hawk true. Down. That's true. That's true. That's that's what reminded me. Because Josh Hartnett is in fucking Pearl Harbor. This movie is no. It's not good. It's very bad. I saw this movie in the theater, dude. I saw this in the theater in 2001. It's got your boy Ben Affleck, Josh Hartnett, Kate Winslet, uh, Alec Baldwin. They did like a 
fucking love triangle bullshit. love triangle type thing which was like you, why you are don't you doing go that? to pearl harbor for fucking michael bay oh you think yeah that? yeah directed by michael bay uh so yeah I, I i don't understand why they did that with this i do I enjoy it, the uh, the the battle sequence is dope you know I, I'll, I will admit that i have not seen this movie in forever so there's like things that i don't quite remember but you know, it's a, uh, just a step in Louvre, the Louvre, <laughs> the Louvre triangle, but, the love triangle. Is terrible. But we, yeah, but we've been talking about uh, a lot of like good war movies. So I just wanted to take a minute and be like, here's a not so good one, which is Pearl Harbor. Uh, <laughs> no, Pearl Harbor's not very good. Which you know, I I only wanted to bring it up because again, Josh Hartnett is in it. But anyway, we don't we don't have to spend too much time on it this. It was a it was video. a stinker. I got one last one, and okay. it's because I like it. Uh, 2001, Enemy at the Gates. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's Yes, I. this one's a good one. I agree. I've seen this. Uh, it has uh, your boy Jude Law in it. Jude Law, Joseph... Joseph uh, Fine, uh, Rachel Wise, who's, uh, you mm-hmm. know, hot damn. Cause Bob, I, Bob Hoskins and... Uh, yeah. Ed Harris. Ed Harris, that's right. That's right. Your uh, boy, uh, the man in black from... If anybody played the original Call of Duty, we all know what it's like going up that hill in the Stalingrad, Stalingrad yeah. with no fucking gun and only bullets. And that's this is pretty much this movie is where they got that from. I'm pretty sure for <laughs> Call of Duty. <laughs> or Rated R movie from, from 2001 again. Uh, uh, which tells the story of Vasily Zaitsev during the Battle of Stalingrad as he. A lot of it's propaganda, but he did kill a hell of a lot of Germans <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, during World War II as a sniper, and he has an, ends up having a sniper duel. Yeah, man. Just uh, this. This is how uh, the Xbox one on one started here, man. With mm-hmm. this thing, right? Yeah. One v one, me, bro. Yeah. Uh, Enemy at the gates is a good movie. Um, yeah, man. Definitely. That's that's one that I definitely had in mind for sure. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yep, yep. Majin Sean in the chat brings up a, a, another great war movie that I enjoy. It's it's more of a comedy, yeah. but tr- fucking Tropic Thunder, dude. Yeah, technically it's a war movie. I, like I, I enjoy that, dude. I enjoy Tropic Thunder. I watched man. Tropic Thunder a lot back when it first came out. Yeah, me too, dude. I I I, I enjoy the shit out of this movie, man. It's it's got a Ben Stiller, you know, uh, fucking Robert Downey Jr., Jack Black. Fucking uh, even uh, what's his name? Tom Cruise has like a cameo or not? I don't know. He's he's is that a cameo? Or is, I mean, I, I guess not. He's he's in the movie for more than I, f- than I feel like he's cameo. in the movie enough to not yeah, be a cameo. He's, he's yeah. I don't. I, it's not a cameo. He just he just looks different. He's not like like I, I think for most people when they first saw it they didn't recognize. I didn't. Was, I had no idea that was Tom Cruise. <laughs> but it's fucking Tom Cruise. But yeah, I, I enjoy this movie a lot too, man. It's really really good. It's a 2008 movie, rated R, an hour 47. I, yeah, I I have I, I like this movie. I enjoy it. We got a lot of good. Uh... Yeah, this is more on the comedy side, which again we I mean we mentioned some comedy war movies earlier, but yeah. yeah. So yeah, this is a good one. I I, I yeah. yeah. It parodies a lot of that stuff. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, there's a few more we could get into, but you know I think, I, I think we're at a good. Start I think I, I think we can stop for now. Yeah. yeah, we'll save some stuff for 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 later. For sure, we can we can go ahead and stop here for now. This is something we can do many more times in the future. There's a lot of war movies out yeah. there. And there's there's, tons there's we a lot seen. more we didn't. There's a lot more we didn't mention, Look, and there's other ones that we haven't seen. We've mentioned some movies we haven't seen yet. We gotta go watch them. <laughs> so. Yeah, like yeah, for me for sure. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of these older ones that I haven't seen, and then also there's like new war movies coming out like this year too. You know? Yeah, what I mean? there's a new Midway coming. Yeah, Midway uh, is a good one. There's another one called like 1917. I think. I showed my dad the trailer, which has for, Benedict for Midway, Cumberbatch so. in it. That that one looks good. He wants to go see that. Oh, actually Would you consider see. Kingsman? Like the new the Kingsman, the new I, one? I haven't seen it. Well, well I haven't either. It hasn't, hasn't come out yet, but I like like you know, if you if you just watch the trailer and then let me know what you think. Eh, maybe. All right. Uh, anyway. Is there anything last minute? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think I don't, so. I don't really have anything. Well, let's just do our shout-outs then, Daniel. We'll all right, we're going to call it a day, show. everybody. Thank you all for joining.
Let me uh, uh, we'll pop that over onto the main screen. Go ahead and call it for now. There you go. Uh, all righty. Thank you guys for joining me or joining us today on this uh, another episode of the Clockwork Cantina. Um, we're just talking, you know, war movies and stuff. So, yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, remember, we have uh, D&D tomorrow, so be sure to join us again here on this channel. Uh, check us out. Uh, again, shout out to Josh for the reroll key. I'm probably going to f- mess around with that more after this. Um, me too. Yeah you, can, <laughs> yeah, you can follow me on the stuff below. I, don't, I forget if it's left or right. Just, you know, you know where it is. You can see it on screen. Follow me on all that stuff. Uh, we'll be back again next week. Uh, yeah. Stay tuned on uh, Josh's Twitter. I think I know what I want the topic to be. Are you, oh, okay. Are you, are you, do you want to do another Why Don't You Put Her in Charge? Yeah, we can do that. Do you want to do a uh, you want to do a video games? We or can do movies or games, or whichever or one. Or did we do TV? We, we did we did movies. We did movies. Do you want to do? So we can do we can do, do TV. Yeah, Let's we can do, do TV. You want to do TV or you want to do video game? Well, I was thinking TV, but I don't really. We can do whichever. It doesn't matter really. All right, let's do TV then. We'll do TV. All right. So there you have it. We right now we literally on the spot just came up with the next week's topic. We're gonna be doing another. Why don't you put her in charge? Uh, this will be the TV show version. So uh, join us next week for that. We'll have our list. I think we're going to do like a, a, a list of like 10, I think is what yeah. we, we, I don't, we, about. we ain't going to do crazy, crazy amounts. Yeah. So I think we'll, we'll do 10. I already have my list from, from last time. I think I have mine too. <laughs> so it's, it's all good to go. We'll just, you know, we'll see I'm, you guys I'm going to look over it and see. If it... We, we may do a double. Yeah. We're going to do a double check and, and check stuff out. But uh, yeah, that's all I got guys. Be sure to, Join me on stream as well. We'll be doing stuff like Overwatch and Red Dead Online and Battlefront 2 and some Jackbox. We'll be doing all kinds of like multiplayer online stuff. So, you know, check me out. That's all I got, though. See you, see you later, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. We'll flop over to me. I think if it'll work. There we go. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out to episode 15 of the Clockwork Cantina. We appreciate and love you for all your support. Uh... Uh, the Clockwork Cantina is now available in MP3 form. Uh, we have it available. Yeah, I got the link right down there below. It'll be uploaded immediately after the show, usually. My camera, my webcam's doing wonky at the moment. Sorry, guys. Uh, I have to adjust that. Uh, tomorrow we have D&D, which uh, uh, come by because goddamn, it's going to be crazy. I've been planning shit all week, so it's going to be a good time. It'll be at 6 p.m. Eastern. 6 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow for Frozen Decimation. Uh, epilogue of, of, of Act 1, and then maybe even some starters of Act 2. Uh, and keep an eye out, uh, just in case we do some streaming of Borderlands stuff this week. And uh, Also, don't forget to hit that follow button down below, because we appreciate it. That's a good way to show some support. Uh, join the discords and stuff. And make sure to go check out the videos on YouTube as well if you can, and like and comment on those, and subscribe to Daniel's uh, YouTube channel, cause Lord knows we need all the help we can get, man. We want to grow this thing, make it big. Oh yeah. Uh, and make sure to hit that follow button. Uh, catch the more Cantina stuff in the future. Uh, also, it is currently September, so if you want to sub to the channel, that's a good way to support as well. It's half off all all tier one subs, I believe. Uh, we appreciate that. It goes toward it goes toward improving things like getting me a new webcam, cause Jesus Christ, this one's <laughs> bad. <laughs> uh, but other than that, we love doing this show for you guys, and your support is what makes that completely possible for. You. Uh, and as you know, uh, we air every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So, and we already know what next week's topic is. So, why don't you put her in charge? Television. Whew. That's a lot. I'm trying to make sure I don't forget stuff because I got a bad memory. I think that's everything. All right, guys. I believe so. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye now. See ya.